பாப்பா பசங்க பேசுறாரோ வரும்ல Yes, so good morning uh, friends, very very happy morning, maybe for all of you, maybe like you know some nervous mornings for the past few days, examination is very uh, near, I am fine uh, Ujla, so uh, at least few of you can know, switch on your uh, uh, camera, at least few, at least two, three people. ஒரு கொஞ்சம் பேர் ஆகுது கொஞ்சம் யா தேங்க்யூ ஸோ மச் இன்னும் கொஞ்சம் பேர் ஃபாஸ்டாக ரொம்ப நாள் ஆச்சுல ஸோ ப்ளீஸ் சிச் ஆன் யோ கேமரா மை ஐடியா ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் நல்ல ஒரு ஹை ஹை லெவல் எனர்ஜி மெயின்டைன் பண்ணுறதுக்கு வி நீட் திஸ் ஸோ ப்ளீஸ் சிச் ஆன் யோ கேமரா மை ஐடியா ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் இன்னும் கொஞ்சம் பேர் குயிக்காக சார் ஜஸ்ட் கிவ் யூ ஃபியூ மினிட்ஸ் டைம் எக்ஸாம் அப்படின்னு சொல்லும்போது எனக்கே ஒரு மாதிரி இருக்கு ஸோ அதனால ஒரு அதனால தான் வாய்ஸ் அப்படி இருக்கு இதுவே வாய்ஸ் நிஜமாவே ப்ராப்ளம் தெரியல கேட்டு பாருங்க வாய்ஸ் கரெக்டா இருக்கா இன்னும் கொஞ்சம் பேர் சாய்ராமநாதன் எல்லாம் கியரப்பா எக்ஸாமுக்கு எல்லாம் ரெடியா ஓகே ஃபேஸ்லாம் லைட்டாக ஏதோ ஒரு சோகத்தில் இருக்கீங்க ஐ டோன்ட் நோ வை ஏதோ டென்ஷனா தெரில நானே டென்ஷனில் இருக்கப்பா ஸோ அதனால வந்து மொக மோகன் சேஸ் தேர் நான் ஸ்டார்ட் வித் சம் ஒக்கே டு கெட் அவுட் ஆஃப் த எக்ஸாம் ஃபியர் ஏதோ நான் எக்ஸாம் எழுதுகிற போகிறேன் எனக்கே ஒரு ஃபியர் இருக்கு சண்டே டூ ஓ கிளாக் டக் 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 அந்த மாதிரி வேணா ஃபியர் வேணா கிரியேட் பண்ணுறேன் ஓகே ஸோ எனிவே மை டியர் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் டுடே வி டோன்ட் ஹவ் மச் டைம் டு டூ த சிட் சாட் அண்ட் ஆல் நம்ம வந்து தோ வி ஆர் அட் அட் செவன் டுவெண்ட்டி நவ் வில் ஸ்பெண்ட் டூ அண்ட் ஆஃப் ஹவர்ஸ் அண்ட் வில் கோ அப் டு நைன் ஃபிஃப்டி டூ அண்ட் ஆஃப் ஹவர்ஸ் அப்படின்றது வந்து ஐ வில் மேக் இட் அப்சல்யூட்லி லைக் நோ ஒர்த் ஸோ இதுக்கு மேலே தேர் ஓன் பி எனி ஃபார்ம் ஆஃப் டிவியேஷன் டக்கு 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 டக்குன்னு அந்த அந்த லாஸ்ட் ரிவிஷன் கிளாஸ் அபவுட் த சப் டாபிக்ஸ் மாதிரி அக்கௌண்டிங் ஸ்டாண்டர்ட் ரிவிஷன் கிளாஸ் வில் பி தேர் ஸோ நோ இன் பிட்வீன் சிட் சார்ட்ஸ் வந்தால் வில் பி தேர் மை டியர் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் குயிக்லி ஸோ அதனால் கொஞ்சம் பயங்கர ஷார்ப்பாக ஃபாஸ்ட்டாக நீங்கள் வந்து ஃபாலோ பண்ணணும் சரி அண்ட் மை டியர் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் அப்ஜெக்டிவ் ஆஃப் திஸ் கிளாஸ் த இந்த டூ அண்ட் ஆஃப் அவர் செஷன் இஸ் நாட் தட் இஃப் யூ ஹாவ் அண்ட் அப்ஜெக்டிவ் லைக் திஸ் If I attend this 2 and a half hours class, sir will solve some 15 problems. Out of that, 5 questions will come. So, if you have an important question, don't sit, my dear friends. I will tell you very clearly what could be your objective or what you can expect from this 2 and a half hours session. So, accounting standard. Accounting standard in group 1, first mark, 20 marks. I told you mandatory question. So, for that, I will give you overall crashing of all the concepts. including here and there some number based discussion also my dear friends after that immediately so maybe uh, taking a small 20 minutes break after this session if you spend another 2 hours with your 3 rtps and 3 suggested answers then i will tell you 25 marks absolutely assured 20 marks here and another 5 marks from framework that will come in the question number 6 so 25 marks uh, assured you can secure this is what we can uh, do my dear friends so uh, the way in which we handle will not be the same manner that we have taken in the classroom where objective scope etc and all just an examination aspect alone examination viewpoint alone discussion will be there are you all ready or thumbs up kudunga innum konja per if you can uh, switch on your videos it will be very good nalla energetic ah irukkum bodhu enakku oru feel kadaikum so accordingly i can proceed so please 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 switch on your camera my dear friends okay so anyway so we are just proceeding uh, further see in the last examination so usually you know uh, maybe so many places no important questions uh, i think in my 7th sense 8th sense and the mari nariya per will give important examination questions and all i to- I-, i have told you already idu romba humbug abdinte maximum enna abdina or prediction na last examination la whatever came will have less importance in the coming examination 
whatever did not came will have more importance in the coming examination nothing beyond this my dear friends adu uttu i in in our dream la god says this question will come and the marla edum kadaiyadu so based on that analysis my dear friends i understood that in the last uh, question paper we had as1 as3 as13 we had questions the first questions we had from as1 we had as3 cash flow statement we had as13 we had my dear friends so which means in this and as11 also we had as11 also we had appo in this examination more significance will be again these four standards can come more significance will be for as2 inventories as10 property planned and equipment as12 government grant as16 borrowing cost out of these four i consider as16 as very very uh, maybe more important because the last three examination i didn't see a question from as16 borrowing cost so thereby as16 borrowing cost can have more possible probability anyway we are going to cover all the standards since the the standard what is spelled out which is coming from the second part of this uh, discussion so thereby today we are going to start our discussion from the reverse my dear friends so uh we had eight different standards so what are we going to do today it is may 2022 accounting standard revision class so uh we have accounting standard 1 2 3 10 11 12 13 16 these are the standards that we have for group 1 compulsorily compulsory question that comes for question number 1 20 marks so then in addition to that i will also discuss little bit of framework also my dear friends okay so chapters revision class we already completed hope you have done that particular work so then i will also give you the few things what you should be focusing more in the next two days my dear friends sunday is your exam so there by today evening saturday what you should focus also we'll discuss anyway so today we are going to start our discussion with a16 borrowing cost so we are starting my dear friends a16 borrowing cost a16 borrowing cost so uh, we would have discussed in the classroom objective scope in a step by step manner 3 hours 4 hours we spent for borrowing cost my dear friends here directly we are taking from what is relevant for problem solving in an examination view point so first of all what is borrowing cost means primarily nothing but interest cost so borrowing cost is only interest cost few other things also will be considered and includes a few other things my dear friends so adala not necessary to list out all those things anyway definition we are not concerned so relevant point what can come in the form of examination is that my dear friends some directly attributable expenses of borrowings so directly attributable expenses also should be considered directly attributable borrowing expenses borrowing expenses like what some brokerage and all my dear friends some commission brokerage for the borrowings so whatever paid will also be should be added to interest to consider that as borrowing cost our question might give you borrowed 10 lakhs interest rate 10 percentage commission paid for obtaining the borrowing 1 lakh abadina then 10 percentage on that borrowing plus that 1 lakh the borrowing cost that's all i hope you understood this all of you so sometimes such number can come so next one more point is that exchange difference exchange difference exchange difference will also be considered as part of borrowing cost exchange difference ke normally you have one standard which standard we have my dear friends it is as11 appo uh, some part of the exchange difference will be accounted as part of borrowing cost so last three times borrowing cost question did not came so thereby if it is going to come nalla heavy a vara chances irukku so thereby we'll spend the next 5 minutes on to the exchange difference impact on the computation of borrowing cost what is primarily borrowing cost interest cost when we borrow 10 crore interest rate 10% appa 10% on 10 crore in the 1 crore da borrowing cost no doubt about it 
Now, my dear friends, what is the impact of exchange differences? Exchange differences. So, what when this exchange difference will come, Abdina? You have borrowed in foreign currency. You are borrowing in foreign currency. Sorry. So, what happened? Directly explaining with the help of number, my dear friends, by 1st April 2021, so J Limited borrowed in foreign currency, my dear friends, say it is 1 lakh dollar. It is 1 lakh dollar. 1 for 2021, um, it is J Limited borrowed, yes, so, like, so borrowed 1 lakh dollar. On the date, exchange rate was one dollar equal to rupees seventy. So, which means immediately in our books, we would have recorded bank to loan. We would have recorded seventy lakhs. So, as per AS eleven, transaction should be initially recognized at the rate prevailing on the date of transaction. AS eleven pragaro on the transaction. Whichever data the transaction originating, oh, that date rate le convert pannu, no, 1 lakh dollar into 70 rupees. So, in our books, uh, accounting is maintained in rupees. Though we are making transaction in dollar, we will not write the accounts in dollar. So, 70 lakhs figure is accounted. Sorry. If interest rate one the interest rate is, my dear friends, it is 10 percentage. Interest rate is 10 percentage. Sorry. Now, 31st March 2022, 31st March 2022, my dear friends, what happens now? We should pay interest. How much interest we should pay now? $10,000 we have to pay. How much interest we have to pay now? $10,000 we have to pay. It is not that 7 lakhs interest you have to pay. You have to pay $10,000. On the date, $1 equal to 75 rupees. $1 equal to 75 rupees. But no doubt, interest to bank. Or this is nothing but borrowing cost. Interest to bank. Like that you would have made the entry. What is that? $10,000. How do you got $10,000? The real borrowing is not 70 lakhs. Real borrowing is 1 lakh dollar. About 1 lakh dollar and the foreign bank charge you 10% interest. You have to pay how much interest? $10,000. But if you want to pay $10,000, rupees how much I need? Na? It is $10,000 into 75. So thereby how much is this amount? 7 lakh 50,000. Thank you so much. 7 lakh 50,000. This is okay. Now, we are telling one more point. What point, Abdina? This loan note, as per AS11, should be restated to the closing rate. This loan should be restated to the closing rate as per AS16. As per AS11, AS11 says that monetary items. What are monetary items? Receivables and payables. So, I am not giving the technical definition. Simple understanding only. The entire discussion will be based upon as if you forgotten everything whatever you have learned about accounting standard but here and there you know the title of the standard based on that one i am taking this session so my dear friends so in as 11 receivables and payables shall be restated at the closing rate Apo, in the 70 lakhs uh, should be restated to 75 lakhs if a loan will be increased by 5 lakhs, if loan is notionally increased by 5 lakhs, Abdina, it is giving you exchange difference of 5 lakhs, which is normally exchange loss taken into PNL. In the loan of 70 lakhs, money are received only 70 lakhs, but suddenly it is becoming 75 because of the exchange rate of 75. Now, balance sheet, I should be showing, showing 75 lakhs. Loan taken 75 lakhs, achana, 5 lakhs will be booked as loss as per AS11. Now, AS16 says that, illa lala, and the last la oru part we consider as borrowing cost. Don't say exchange loss, we consider that as borrowing cost. It is now on the AS16 order stand. I hope you are following this, everybody. Apo, in the interest anyway borrowing cost, this interest is anyway borrowing cost. Adala no doubt, in addition to this interest, some part of exchange difference will also be accounted as borrowing cost. All of you, other how much, Abdina, the standard says that it is a difference between interest in reporting currency and interest in foreign currency. Interest in reporting currency and interest in foreign currency. That is 
original loan evlo in rupees la if you borrow loan would have been 70 lakhs appo rupees oda interest rate my dear friends rupees oda interest rate say it is 12 percentage rupees oda interest rate vandu 12 percentage my dear friends appo uh, how much would have been the interest illa adu 14 percent eduthukala 14 percent 14 percentage 14 percent is the interest rate in rupees abadina how much would have been the interest appo adjustment of exchange difference to borrowing cost adjustment of exchange difference to borrowing cost how much na interest in rupees it is 70 lakhs the loan in rupees adhe mari 14 percentage the interest for rupees so interest in foreign car i mean interest in reporting currency is 9 lakh 80000 9 lakh 80000 I hope you are following. Stay tuned. We will do a heavy adam pandro sharp paranga. Adi mari actual interest in actual interest in dollar. Dollar version la. What was actual interest? This is the real interest you are paying to the bank. How much interest you are paying to the bank? Seven lakh fifty thousand. Seven lakh fifty thousand. About this difference, two lakh thirty thousand is what we are understanding as the part of exchange loss. Considered as borrowing cost, part of exchange loss considered as borrowing cost. First of all, how much is the total exchange loss? How much is the total exchange loss? What was the total exchange loss? Very good. So total exchange loss is nothing but restating seventy lakhs to seventy five lakhs or one lakh into. 75 minus 70, 1 lakh into 5 rupees, 5 lakhs the total exchange loss. On the 5 lakhs left, 2 lakh 30 thousand will be considered as adjustment to borrowing cost. 2 lakh 30 thousand will be considered as adjustment to borrowing cost. Remaining 2 lakh 70, we will tell AS11, you yourself account it. According to AS11, 2 lakh 70 is exchange loss. I hope you are following this. So thereby, my dear friends, our total exchange difference was 1 lakh dollar into 75 minus 70 it is 5 lakhs in the 5 lakhs la according to as 16 we adjust 2 lakh 30 thousand balance is accounted as per as 11 which is 2 lakh 70 thousand exchange loss in P and del exchange loss in P and del like that we should be in a portion to apportion the total exchange difference into a 16 borrowing cost and a 11 exchange differences this 2 lakh 30 thousand is borrowing cost in addition to what amount can you tell if you understood this this 2 lakh 30 thousand is in addition to what amount borrowing cost 2 lakh 30 borrowing cost now it is a borrowing cost in addition to already accounted borrowing cost of 7,50,000. Super wonderful. All of you have got a wonderful memory. So thereby 7,50,000 anyway borrowing cost. In addition to that 2,30,000 you may borrowing cost. We are telling as per AS16. All of you have got end standard link. Panni, there is a possibility of a 5 mark question my dear friends. AS11 no, AS16. No. First of all, in the Finax exchange loss arising is because of applicability of which standard na? It is purely applicability of AS11. Adhan AS16 encroach pani solladhi. Out of that 5 lakhs, some portion we want to consider as borrowing cost. How much na? It is difference between interest in reporting currency and interest in foreign currency. It is a difference between interest in reporting currency and interest in foreign currency. Adhukku and the rent interest rate will be given to you in the question. I hope you understood this demonstration. All of you. Avala This is relating to what is borrowing cost. Apo some commission brokerage na adhu add pannu. Then some portion of exchange loss also accounted as borrowing cost. Remaining exchange loss will be accounted as per AS11. Which is recognizing in P and Del as gain or loss. Like that we are discussing. I hope you understood this pakka. Can I go to the next, next discussion? Okay, going to the next discussion my dear friends. So, AA16 or the part is over. Okay. Next, 
uh, what we should understand abhi na the borrowing cost capitalization my dear friends borrowing cost cap what is borrowing cost over next uh, borrowing cost can be capitalized capitalized only if relates to only if it is relating to only if it is relating to a qualifying asset borrowing cost can be capitalized only if it is relating to a qualifying asset qualifying asset abina an asset that takes substantial period for its uh, for getting ready for intended use or sale substantial period generally 12 months period it can be more than 12 months less than 12 months generally 12 months period on the 12 months ku mela aagura time irundha then that asset will be considered as qualifying asset all of you but directly buying one uh, vehicle by taking loan upon interest can be added to the cost of vehicle and no because vehicle the moment it is purchased it is ready for use apo we cannot idu way we are ordering a vehicle to be made and that vehicle uh, construction will happen in 14 months 18 months time na appo the interest can be added to the cost of that vehicle i hope you are following this everybody அப்ப அதை பேஸ் பண்ணி சம் கேஸ் ஸ்டடி டைப் கொஸ்டின் கேன் கம் சோ வெதர் இன்ட்ரெஸ்ட் கேன் பி கேபிடலைஸ்ட் ஆர் நாட் நாட் அப்போ யூ ஷுட் செக் வெதர் இட் இஸ் குவாலிஃபைங் அசட் ஆர் நாட் இஃப் யூ ஆர் நாட் வெரி ஷுவர் நா எக்ஸாமினேஷன்ல டோன்ட் கமிட் கிவ் த கண்டிஷனல் ஆன்சர் இஃப் திஸ் இஸ் எ குவாலிஃபைங் அசட் இட் கேன் பி கேபிடலைஸ்ட் இஃப் திஸ் இஸ் நாட் எ குவாலிஃபைங் அசட் இட் ஷுட் நாட் பி கேபிடலைஸ்ட் ஐ ஹோப் யூ ஆர் ஃபாலோயிங் திஸ் बिकॉज assessing qualifying asset or not is a matter of judgment na you need to exhibit your knowledge about a16 you will get marks i hope you are following this appo when you are not very clear it qualifying asset i lean i don't know then no problem then give conditional answer and make sure that you are telling the examiner i know the provision but i don't know whether it is qualifying asset or not that management only should tell like that you should exhibit the provision i hope you are following this everybody சரி இப்போ தேர்ட் செக்மெண்ட் மை டியர் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் இந்த கேபிட்டலைசேஷன் மீன்ஸ் வாட்னா இந்த பாரோயிங் காஸ்ட் கெட்டிங் ஆடேட் டு த வேல்யூ ஆஃப் த அசெட் பாரோயிங் காஸ்ட் கெட்டிங் ஆடேட் டு த வேல்யூ ஆஃப் த அசெட் அதில் மூணு செக்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் டிஸ்கஷன் மை டியர் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் வி ஹாவ் கமன்ஸ்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் கேபிட்டலைசேஷன் ஃப்ரம் வென் இன்ட்ரெஸ்ட் கேன் பி ஆடே டு த காஸ்ட் ஃப்ரம் வென் இன்ட்ரெஸ்ட் கேன் பி ஆடே டு த காஸ்ட் ஆஃப் தி அசெட் சஸ்பென்ஷன் சஸ்பென்ஷன் அதுக்கப்புறம் செசேஷன் செசேஷன் so when interest can be added to cost of an asset number 1 when it should be suspended when it should be completely stopped suspended na temporarily you are not to be adding but later on again you can add adu suspension then cessation we are not going to focus much about commencement and suspension and all most of the times uh, problems coming from cessation so very simple ba once an asset is substantially ready for its intended use or sale once an asset is substantially ready for its intended use or sale then capitalization shall be ceased which means you should not add interest until the asset is actually sold or until the asset is actually put into use so you should not add once it is ready for sale once it is ready for use then it should be stopped is what we are understanding i hope you are following so qualifying asset means need not be pp alone even inventories can also be qualifying asset suppose i am always constructing building and selling buildings na building is my inventories all of you appo adukku in the borrowing cost capitalization applicable ana yes even if in inventory also if it is going to take substantial period i can consider that is why we call it as until it is ready for intended use or sale so maybe regularly i am selling building it still i can call add the uh, interest to the qualifying asset hope you are following the recently uh coming uh, rtp the re- the recent rtp my dear friends have a question from this as 16 based on the cessation adala two questions are added my dear friends so one is like no they are telling one asset was uh, one equipment was uh, manufactured or one equipment was constructed then an the equipment should be fitted into a production plant production plant and machinery this equipment is a part of the production plant and equipment now only thing is still trial run of this particular production uh, plant is not completed equipment or construction is over 
and you know trial run is to happen for two months period but during this two months uh, can we capitalize can we capitalize the interest was the question my dear friends so please understand when we say until as it is ready for intended use now it is after trial run that it is ready for use it is not before the trial run me over installation over trial run means it is not ready for use after trial run the it is ready for use which means interest can be capitalized even during the period of dash also interest can be capitalized during the period of trial run also rtp on the question potentially it could be an examination question all of you so on the cessation are they madri total uh, interest incurred in a particular year was 25 lakhs but out of this 25 lakhs 18 lakhs is the interest relating to the period till the asset is ready for use but the entity capitalized the entire 25 lakhs because it is a loan exclusively taken for that particular asset of the argument then you should tell no 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 even if it is a loan exclusively taken for a particular asset we can capitalize only till asset is substantially ready for its intended use or sale I hope you are following everybody not till it is actually put into use not till it is actually sold sir in our question came in the RTP was like this my dear friends one construction was over so 7 lakhs not to be capitalized in this example so one construction was over and it is going to be sold but marketing activities for the sale have not happened marketing activities for the sale have not happened which means building or a construction over building want to be sold and the market you know advertisement in the newspaper was not given about sale Apo, during this period can we capitalize the building can we capitalize the i mean can we capitalize the interest to the cost of the building was the question so we cannot because the building is ready for sale you have not done, done the selling activity so selling activity is not uh, making the building ready for intended use or sale so thereby on the period la interest cannot be capitalized i hope you are following sorry appo idoda namba standard vandu complete pandrom my dear friends so in one area i will also discuss that also sorry um, in our problem area so so far discussion and examination ki ivlo neram discuss pannadhu a16 la enna sir potential a varuna onnu in the exchange difference oda capitalization base panni or question varalam innonnu in the cessation base panni question can come all of you third my dear friends sometimes it, it is in relation to general borrowings specific borrowings so general borrowing specific borrowings exactly navin super so in case of specific borrowings are the sir i have taken a loan exclusively for a particular qualifying asset which is called a specific borrowing so or particular loan specifically identifiable to a qualifying asset specific borrowing my dear friends in case of that then it is what is to be capitalized now what is to be capitalized means it is actual borrowing cost minus temporary investment income temporary investment income so based on this some question can come what is that now sir what happened is that we have taken a loan on 1 4 2021 for 20 lakhs we took a loan for 20 lakhs interest rate was 10 percentage 10 lakhs was spent on the same day 10 lakhs was spent or 12 lakhs was spent in the confusion 12 lakhs was spent on the same day remaining 8 lakhs was spent only by first uh, july 2021 first july 2021 total 20 lakhs was spent and uh, first initially spent only 12 lakhs later on uh, uh, 170 you spent 8 lakhs but during this period for 8 lakhs was there in our bank during this particular 3 months period so borrow upon 20 lakhs or 8 lakhs was in our bank all of you and the bank gave you some income so there was some 3 months interest income on 8 lakhs received on 8 lakhs received 
say rupees twenty thousand rupees twenty thousand we received as interest income from bank for eight lakhs. Apo how much interest should be capitalized? How much interest should be capitalized? Abdina, it is actual borrowing cost on entire loan. Here you should not calculate twelve lakhs into eight lakhs into nine months like that and all twenty lakhs into ten percentage actual borrowing cost. 2 lakhs actual borrowing cost 2 lakhs minus temporary investment income until the time loan used for the asset some in between investment giving you some income now that income should be deducted so deduct 20,000 so we will have 1 lakh 80,000 is what you need to capitalize hope you understand this discussion so either way this you cannot do in case of general borrowing. What is general borrowing? Na? Sir, I have lot of loans, sir. Loan 1, loan 2, loan 1, loan 2, loan 3, 20 lakhs, 30 lakhs, 50 lakhs with 10% interest, 14% interest, then 12% interest. Like this I have loans, sir. So, and I am using for various assets, sir. So, we don't have any specific borrowing. In this case, no adjustment of temporary investment income and all. You should calculate something called a weighted average cost of borrowings. Weighted average cost of borrowings. So what is that? Nothing but the weighted average cost of capital. What do you normally calculate? So 20 lakhs into 10 percent, 2 lakhs, 30 lakhs into 14 percentage. What is this? 4.2 lakhs, 12 percentage and 50 lakhs, 6 lakhs. So it is. 12.2 uh, lakhs is the total interest eh? and it is 100 lakhs so thereby total borrowing cost divided by total borrowings into 100 so 12.2 lakhs by 100 lakhs into 100 will give you 12.2 percentage now this rate only we should use for finding the borrowing cost to be capitalized. Now out of 100 lakhs, you spend 25 lakhs on a particular date, on a particular asset now, then you should calculate interest proportionately by using what rate, not 10, 14, 12, by using 12.2%. I hope you are following this. This is applicable in case of general borrowing. This is applicable in case of general borrowing. Hope you are understanding this. All of you, our 4 hours chapter, 25 minutes we uh, compress pandro. so major areas in and the exchange difference adjustment are they very directly attributable expenditure adjustment commission brokerage also should be added to the interest amount all of you then we discussed about the cessation part we also discussed about qualifying asset has to be a qualifying asset in our part one the general borrowing specific borrowing these are the problem areas that you should be aware of now in the concept of base money, 3 RTPs, 3 suggested answers, le, if you have A16 question, na, solve it, preparation is over for A16, all of you, partially A11 is over, so did you understand this, any doubt, na, you can definitely raise my dear friends, can I proceed further, okay, Sai Ram Nath understood, ha? super, okay, my dear friends, going to next standard, which is, AS 12, AS 12, government grant, sir, upon normal class, or calmness, later on, cake uh, good at the bar, the non attention again, so uh, examination, and the Ungul can a feeling you go other now and the receipt panita. I'm just taking the lecture. And I'm like, yes, and you're calm, a bit jolly and arthamatic. You know, the lamb would be other because faster the bow. Shall we go? Okay, so my dear friends, AS 12 uh, government grant. Okay, so as far as government grant is concerned, uh, it's purely treatment for receipt of grant, refund of grant. We should know how to account uh, accounting for accounting for. Receipt refund, receipt of grant, receipt of grant, refund of grant. This receipt of grant accounting depend upon what sort of grant you receive. So it is a monetary grant, 
monetary grant. அப்படின்னு ரொம்ப confusing a terminology we don't want to use government giving cash. Cash it is through bank, government is giving money. All of you, government is giving some asset other than cash. Assets other than cash. We are not giving money. They are giving directly asset. Some asset they are giving. All of you, two type of grant. One monetary grant, in one non-monetary grant. So monetary grant, na government is giving cash. Hey, jolly, government is giving free cash. For what purpose? Ha, that purpose only will decide. Again, what is the accounting? Government gives grant in the nature of promoter's contribution. In the nature of promoter's contribution. Government giving grant in the nature of promoter's contribution. Government gives grant for buying fixed assets. That standard still continue to use the terminology called fixed asset. We have already changed the word fixed asset into property, plant and equipment. Okay. Then government is giving grant for some services which means in the nature of revenue. Sorry. Apo government is giving cash. For what purpose? Na, moon type we are dividing pa. In the nature of promoter's contribution, property, plan and equipment and for services. So, it is actually fixed asset. Adala, we have depreciable or non-depreciable and depreciable. Non-depreciable and depreciable. Sorry, services could end. For the past services, for the future services, for the past services, future services. If you grant account, quicker. In the nature of promoter's contribution, what does it mean? Sir, we are going to commence one business or a new unit, or a new venture. We are opening in a one particular place. That's the total fund for buying asset, working capital requirement, advertisements, for buying raw materials, operational expenditure. And the very total funding is around say uh, 50 crores. 50 crores. All of fund to say it. And the 50 crores, la, government says that, okay, total project you present 50 crore. Say 20 percent we will give. 10 crores government is going to give us cash. For what? Abdina? In the total business. Ke, and the 20, 10 crore which you can buy raw material. You can use it for advertisement purpose. You can buy fixed asset. Don't do it. Total business requirement. Le, some portion we are contributing. Na. Then entire actual 50 crore should have been contributed by owners of the business. Correct? Apa? Apo in the capacity of owners when they are bringing. Not for sharing the ownership. They are giving free only. But not for a particular purpose. So, because of they are contributing to a percentage of the total funding requirement, na, then that is called in the nature of promoter's contribution. Name itself, usually total funding should be arranged by owners. And the owner's funding, le, some portion government is giving, na, that is in the nature of promoter's contribution. In that case, it is credited to capital reserve and the grant will be credited to capital reserve. Or entry, it is bank to government grant. Government grant to capital reserve. So bank to capital reserve panna kuda adana panla. But this is a normal way. First is the grant. And the grant was taken to capital reserve. It's not somebody giving money directly as capital reserve. All of you. This is basic accounting for grant received in the nature of promoter's contribution. Now, government is giving money for buying land. Specifically non-depreciable. Na? Government is giving money for buying land. Apo, what is the accounting? Then the standard says that there are two forms of accounting, my dear friends. Either you can show that particular grant as reduction from the value of the land. Or you can directly credit capital reserve. So, we can credit again capital reserve or uh, creditor to land. Reduced from value of land. When we say uh, non-depreciable asset, not land. So thereby, my dear friends, either it is bank to capital reserve or bank to land. So for example, land, it is uh, 5 crores. Government giving me 1 crore. Apo, what are the two accounting? 1. Land to bank, 5 crores. Bank to capital reserve, 1 crore. Apo, asset side, 5 crore. Equity side, la, there will be 1 crore. Another presentation is 
land to bank 5 crore, bank to land 1 crore, our balance sheet la, land will be shown net value of 4 crores. I hope you are following this. Everybody? Okay. This is for non-depreciable asset. Similarly, my dear friends, as far as depreciable asset is concerned, if it is depreciable asset, na, similar treatment only, similar treatment only, only thing is that instead of crediting to capital reserve, we will be crediting that as deferred income. It will be recognized as deferred income. Uh, in the income is what sort of income? Government grant. So it is called deferred government grant. So standard never say you should use the word called deferred government grant. They say that it is called deferred income. In the, this is a income da, but should be amortized over the period of the usage of the asset. Over the period of usage of the asset in the proportion of depreciation. In the proportion of depreciation. Depreciation equal of dina, grant to equal. Depreciation WDV of Dina grant to WDV, right? It should be amortized. How it can be done? For example, my dear friends, asset order value 5 crores or 500 lakhs. Government grant received 100 lakhs. Apo presentation number 1 is asset to bank. Asset to bank 500 lakhs. Ademari bank to deferred government grant. 100 lakhs this asset is having a life of five years this asset is having a life of say four years it is having a life of four years four years life and the four years upon which are depreciation entry is depreciation to asset four years so slm no other information given a slm 125 lakhs 500 divided by four Similarly, deferred government grant will be transferred to PNL to the extent of 100 lakhs by 4. It is 25 lakhs. Like that will be accounting, my dear friends. Hope you are following this. This is one method of accounting. Method number 2 what? Abdina? It is method number 2. Asset to bank. Asset to bank. It is 500 lakhs. The government grant very important from the coming examination. So, that is particular refund based money or question. Varo. The last uh, RTP le, we had phone RTP. In the RTP, le, phone RTP le, you had a question from this government grant based on the refund. Day. So, please do definitely uh, uh, go through that particular problem. In the, so, asset to bank, it is 500 lakhs. Then, bank account debit. Bank account debit. Or plant of Dina, it's only a specific asset. Uh, Akash. Akash is asking, sir, whether plant of Dina promoter contribution. A promoter contribution na promoter hai, or asset wang both and promoter or word use for no man. Like common sense use for no Okay. So or companies opening a new industrial unit. Government give grant. Apo anga when the promoter word will be coming or not. Abdi ne check pani parga. So rumbo oru lower level yosi ko kono wider yosi will be getting it, my dear friend. So the in this one company buying a plant, government giving grant. Apo there is no question of promoter's contribution, my dear friend. Understood? Ah. So promoter's contribution apo abdi na promoter na word apo varu abdi na. If only when a new business unit commencement agum bodo da. Promote under word A will come. Accordingly, you can take it, my dear friends. That's the only backward area, friend, forward area. Or a new unit you are starting. That's the government is giving grant. So you are mistaken. Backward area panna da promoter varu varu. Forward area la panna promoter varu I don't know what sort of understanding you are having and all. So diverse change idu pannenge. Specific asset a, business venture a, new unit of business a, abdine, check panikonga. That's all simple as that. So I don't know why you're getting confused using certain words. In the word particular pogading exam la, in the word vanda idu, in the word vanda abdi kare adu. Or business you are starting na, then promoter will come. Or asset you are buying na, promoter word will not come. I hope you're following this. The term promoter abdi intra the person who commences as a new unit, new business. I hope you're following everybody. Okay, so similarly in the treatment bank account debit to asset to bank it is 500 lakhs bank account debit to asset to asset to asset it is 100 lakhs. Now what happens 
depreciation you tell depreciation to asset depreciation to asset will be 500 lakhs minus 100 lakhs divided by 4 suppose the question have given residual value na then you should consider residual value in charging depreciation don't forget it all of you examination le, most of the times they will give residual value if that be the case even residual value to be detected to arrive at the depreciation like this we should be charging depreciation hope you are understanding this discussion all of you it is second treatment if either base the question is going to come so in this scenario le, suppose my dear friend it is in year 2 in year 2 beginning grant of rupees 60 lakhs refunded grant of rupees 60 lakhs refunded give journal entry for year 2 for both the options both the options so in year 2 beginning grant of rupees 60 lakhs actually grant of 100 lakhs received but beginning of year 2 la after first year or beginning of year 2 60 lakhs grant refunded apo give journal entry they are asking apo second year what is entry grant refunded ah under option number 1 so refund or accounting is what abdina whatever entry you made for receipt that should be reversed whatever entry you made for receipt that should be uh, reversed is what we should understand my dear friends i hope you are following everybody so thereby my dear friends ipo suppose question number uh, uh, one la, it is given as asset to bank bank to dgg then at the end of first year already 25 lakhs already transferred so remaining what you have 75 lakhs and what you have here how much you are refunding 60 lakhs you are refunding all of you Apo, what is the accounting of Dina? It is year 2 beginning. It is you refunded this. So, uh, deferred government grant to bank 60 lakhs. You can debit entirely to deferred government grant provided you have adequate balance in the deferred government grant. Suppose the example. Eh? 80 lakhs government grant refunded na 80 lakhs government grant refunded na can you tell what will be the journal entry number books la, we had 100 lakhs other couple 25 lakhs already charged to pnl our balance sheet la, we have only 75 lakhs but we are refunding 80 lakhs na what will be the entry if you are refunding 80 lakhs na what will be the entry it is dgg 75 lakhs dgg 75 lakhs apro pnl 5 lakhs to bank 80 lakhs very good abhinaya thank you so much super apo dgg 75 pnl 5 to bank it is 80 lakhs like that you should be making it is not dgg 60 lakhs va it is 75 lakhs is what we should be understanding because books we have 75 lakhs it is not 60 abhinaya please do appreciate ah, already given 75 and 5 I hope all of you following this. In the sum, it is only 60, na? DGG to bank 60 lakhs. I hope you are following. Understood? Sorry. If depreciation will be affected, ha? will not be affected. Ha? Depreciation will be affected, ha? will not be affected. Ha? Because of refund, because of refund, depreciation will not be affected if there was first option. First option are the depreciation is not affected. Suppose that company did not give first treatment, it was giving second treatment. What second treatment? Then they received a grant, they didn't put into DGG, they took it to asset account. How do we know whether they have put into DGG or to asset account? That will be very clearly mentioned in the problem. What they have done. So there be don't worry. All of you. When they received a grant, what they have done in a very clearly would have been mentioned in the problem. So, don't worry. So, uh, if they have followed the second option, then refund what entry? Refund what entry under second alternative? Here it is. Asset to bank. 60 lakhs. Asset to bank, 60 lakhs. And then what will be the depreciation? Depreciation to asset. For second year end what is the depreciation depreciation will be my dear friends it is 375 lakhs 
was the book value existing at the end of first year 375 lakhs is the book value that exists at the end of first year 375 yeah illa 400 nanikana 400 lakhs is the book value that exists at the end of first year because uh, 500 adala already dated 100 300 pa not even 400 300 300 lakhs how 300 lakhs the book value so just book value by end of first year is cost was 500 minus government grant 100 at the government depreciation deducted was 100 so book value was 300 lakhs book value by end of first year was 300 now by making this entry asset to bank the book value of the asset becomes 360 lakhs book value of the asset becomes 360 lakhs our depreciation will be my dear friends depreciation to asset it is 300 lakhs plus 60 lakhs divided by remaining useful life of three years it will be 120 lakhs exactly by this is 120 lakhs it will be the new depreciation so what was the actual depreciation you charge in first year first year depreciation was 100 lakhs but second year depreciation is 120 lakhs i hope you are following this everybody either way option one la depreciation is not changing first year 125 lakhs second year also the same 125 lakhs it will be continued without any effect hope you are understanding this particular area all of you so receipt and refund based on depreciable asset is going to be the examination question if it comes mostly it will come so receipt and refund relating to depreciable asset now you should be focusing so many other types of grant you need not be focusing much things all of you okay appo adhe mari last rtp la or question came my dear friends what question abadina see um, the asset was depreciated the asset was having some value my dear friends and uh, uh, it was depreciated suppose it was asset or a cost Imagine asset the cost was 500 lakhs. How much? 500 lakhs. All of you. Say, this is 250 uh, grant, government grant received was say 300 lakhs. Government grant received was 300 lakhs. Apo that was already deducted from the value of the asset. Ha, please summer. I will tell you like this. Asset was 500 lakhs. All of you. Okay, useful life for the four years. Useful life for the four years. Depreciation charged for two years. Depreciation already charged for two years. So year one, 125 lakhs. Year two, 125 lakhs. Depreciation charged. Book value now, 250 lakhs. Now, in relation to this asset, grant was applied. This was on 1-4-2021. So grant was applied on 1-4-2021 but received just now. So grant was received only by 31st March 2023. We received a grant of 300 lakhs grant. Bookseller value of the asset is 250 lakhs. Grant received how much? 300 lakhs. Ipo, the company wants to deduct the grant from value of asset. The company wants to detect the value of grant, the grant from the value of the asset. Can they do so? Abhina question. So, what is your answer? So, asset purchased on 1421, 500 lakhs. Grant for 300 lakhs was applied on 1421. And receive We received the confirmation and received only on 31st March 2023. 300 lakhs grant received. And book value 250 lakhs. So we have two alternatives for accounting. One is taking into DGG. All of you. Okay. Other okay. But I don't want to follow that option. Another option you are telling no. What is it? Accounting center giving another option. You can deduct from the value of asset. You can deduct from the value of asset. Now I want to deduct from the value of asset. Can I do so? Abdina. So my dear friends. If you deduct entire 300 lakhs. Then the asset value become a negative of 50 which is not allowed which is not allowed so thereby you can deduct the value of the asset to the extent of only 250 lakhs remaining 50 lakhs should be recognized in the PNL as an expense income 
as an expense or income it's income it's grant received about 250 lakhs will be shown up to the extent of book value we can deduct from the value of asset remaining 50 lakhs will be shown only as an income is no rtp question or potential examination question all of you when you deduct grant from the value of the asset, you can deduct only to the maximum of the book value. Na. Any excess na naturally will be recognized only in the p and l. You by deducting the grant from the value of the asset, asset cannot have dash balance. Asset cannot have dash balance. This is the summary of that entire discussion. What is that? Negative balance. Hope all of you understood this. Everybody? Sorry. One more time, my dear friends. Sir, they are grant one services received. Na. When the pandemic time, la, we were doing a lot of uh, services, my dear friends. On the pandemic time, 2021, la, I did a lot of ambulance services, oxygen services to so many people. 2021, la, thereby, government now acknowledging by giving grant in 2122. Apo, and the grant received eh, will be taken into my. It's not for buying assets and all. I did a lot of services in the pandemic environment. So I'm getting grant. So that will be taken into my p and L. All of you. Okay. Government is giving me grant for providing um, good drinking water to uh, so many people for the next 10 years. Adhikaga government is giving grant abdina. Then that grant, my dear friends, should not be taken into single P and L. It should be taken into deferred government grant and it should be amortized to P and L. It should be amortized to P and L. All of you. Apo past services conditions already satisfied. Government is giving me grant abdina. Then that grant should be taken as my income in P and L, not past P and L, current P and L. But if it is for future services, na, then the grant received will be taken into balance sheet liability side. And every year, some portion of the grant will be taken into p and L. We call this amortization of grant. Hope you are understanding this. All of you. Okay. So, uh, uh, my dear friend, Vishal, I already told you. So, refund ke enne treatment abdi na. Whatever treatment you provide for receipt of grant, that receipt of grant should be reversed. Suppose you have already credited NTA grant in PNL in the past. Now you have to refund. Na. Naturally, now it will be debited to PNL. Originally credited to deferred government grant. Na. Now it will be debited to deferred government grant to the extent available. Balance naturally will come out of PNL. Uh, Vishal. So there is no separate treatment for capital grant refund, revenue grant refund. La. Refund accounting is based upon what accounting you provided at the time of receipt of grant. We shall hope you are understanding or acknowledgement. So proceeding further. Can I proceed further? Sir, Apo, sir, AS12 and we discuss quicker, sir. What and all we told is a problem area, sir. If I am going to start a new venture, new unit, one industrial unit is to be opened like that. Father government is giving grant. It is in the nature of promoter's contribution. It should be credited to capital reserve. Similarly, for buying non-depreciable asset, na, it is credited to capital reserve or deducted from value of asset. Both the answer you should give. Depreciable asset, abdina, then either deducted from the value of asset or put into DGG and same way like depreciation, you should take the DGG into p and L. Depreciation you charge, DGG is taken to p and L credit. All of you. Refund treatment is exactly the reverse of receipt treatment. What treatment you provide for receipt, other than reverse the refund. All of you. Grant for past services na, then predated to PNL, future services na, put into DGG and later on every year it is amortized to PNL. This uh, AS12 my dear friends. So, this is the PPE, uh, depreciable asset, receipt of grant, refund of grant, based all the last 3, 4 RTP question to solve my dear friends, more than sufficient for AS12 preparation. All of you. If A16 over, AS12 over. Can I go to next standard? AS11. AS11. 
AS11 deals with three items, my dear friends. So, title and uh, the effects of changes in foreign exchange rate. AS11, the effects of changes in foreign exchange rates. deals with three items accounting for foreign currency transaction accounting for forward contract then translation translation in branch branch accounts uh, last three attempts we did not had problem from foreign branch so thereby potentially this time it could be even a 15 mark question or a 10 mark question from foreign branch also there is a possibility because last three examination we see questions coming from dependent and independent only exchange over the alternative so thereby there is a chance again just the comparities of the question papers of the past tells that there is a possibility of a foreign branch question this time okay sorry translation rules are applicable to foreign branch problem coming back to accounting for foreign currency transaction what do you mean by this sir we are an Indian enterprise making all the transaction rupees either one or two transaction it is denominated in foreign currency when foreign customer request you should bill me only in foreign currency like that requirement now so one or two transaction i am doing in foreign currency but accounting i should do in indian currency so other than we are going to discuss this accounting for foreign currency transaction about few rules i don't want to jot down all those points and all my dear friends what and all notes we have written weekly recalling transaction initially to be recorded at the rate prevailing on the date of transaction we call that a spot rate spot rate of dinner the rate prevailing at the time of transaction so i am selling goods to a foreign customer at that time whatever exchange rate prevailing oh, on that exchange rate should record the transaction maybe billing is thirty thousand dollar but at that time 70 rupees na 30 thousand dollar into 70 rupees is what i should be accounting all of you so sold goods for thirty thousand dollar on first uh, march 2021 on the date one dollar equal to 70 Apo, we should be recording at this value it's very easy no so what is that it is debt task to sales customer to sales 30,003 lakhs so 21 lakhs 21 lakhs how do you get 21 lakhs 30,000 dollar into rupees 70 this is the entry we are making on 1 3 2021 now this money is expected to be collected by expected to be collected by 1st June 2021 Achacho, transaction we are doing in 2021 collection in the year 2122 what we do now standard says that oh if it is going to spread over two different years means then by the year end monetary items from this transaction what do you mean by monetary items money which is foreign currencies and receivables and payables which are in foreign currencies so cash in hand cash at bank as well as receivables and payables fixed receivables and payables Apo inga sales monetary item correct ha? sales is not monetary item only assets and liabilities can be monetary item so you already explained that so what is that uh, monetary item now in the sum la it is only debt task which is monetary item fixed receivable what is the fixed receivable thirty thousand dollar now whatever happens i will be getting thirty thousand dollars and the debt as the monetary item should be restated to the closing rate imagine one dollar equal to rupees 75 Apo, this particular debt task should be restated debt task balance will increase so it is uh, ten thousand thirty thousand dollar thirty thousand dollar into five rupees why five rupees 75 minus 70 
So it is uh, how much? 1,50,000 tetas increase which will be recognized as exchange gain which will be transferred to p and l which will be transferred to p and l hope you are understanding this all of you next by 1st june 2021 imagine this amount is getting collected at that time one dollar equal to 78 78 so in that case my dear friends it is bank account debit bank account debit 30000 into 78 what is that amount my dear friends 22 lakh 40 yeah 20 23 lakh 40 yeah 23 lakh 40000 credit debtors in our books debtors will be 22 lakh 50000 and we'll book again exchange gain to the extent of 90000 90000 this gain is for the year 2021 and this gain is for the year 2122. This the first recognized gain is for the year 2021. Second is gain for the year 2122. Apo in the demonstration lane, what are the concepts you are understanding now? Transaction initial should be accounted at the rate prevailing on that date. Then if balance sheet date comes before the settlement, then dash item should be restated. Monetary item should be restated. Yeh monetary receivable payable money irna, adhi should be restated to the balance sheet rate. Differences will be recognized as gain or loss. Adhi kapar settlement time la varay gain or loss. What is the gain or loss? Difference between the settlement value and book value. Settlement value and book value is also recognized as gain or loss. Is what we are doing for the accounting for foreign currency transaction so hope you are understanding this everybody sir ipo the same is applicable my dear friend the same is applicable even if it is a loan taken in uh, from foreign bank also we already discussed it, that it is initially recognized upper restated every year monetary item it is re getting restated every year all of you sir ana uh, AS level le, there is an option there is an alternative treatment option to apply alternative treatment what is the alternative treatment my dear friends in the alternative treatment first of all is applicable only for long term monetary item it is applicable only for alternative treatment so what is alternative sir first be very clear Every time exchange gain loss to be taken recognized in PNL. One more time. Whether it is restatement gain or loss or settlement gain or loss, there are two gain or loss. One restatement gain or loss, another one is settlement gain or loss. Both the gain or loss always to be recognized in PNL. All of you. Then and there, we should be recognizing in PNL. This is first primary treatment as per AS11. Now, alternative treatment. Alternative treatment. Instead of this, we can follow some other treatment. What is the treatment? Now, before I discuss the treatment, it is applicable only for dash items. It is applicable only for dash item. This is as per para 46A of AS11. <coughs> it is applicable only for long term monetary item, which means what? For small trade receivables, which is going to be settled in two months time, five months time and all, this is not applicable. Only when that monetary item is having a maturity period of more than 12 months, more than 12 months, then only it is a long term monetary item. All of you, Apo, what we are understanding now, suppose my dear friends, I took a loan, bank to loan, which is uh, $60,000. So, one dollar equal to 70. Apo it is 42 lakhs. 42 lakhs. Like this, I recognized this particular loan, my dear friends. I love you. Okay, this is the loan recognized on 1421. Now, by 31st March 2022, we know one dollar equal to 75. Apo I should restate this loan. I should restate this loan. Correct? By 5 rupees. Apo uh, 60,000 into 5 of Dina, it is 3 lakhs rupees. 3 lakhs rupees should be increased to the loan. Correct? Apo, first treatment, my dear friends, 1 dollar to 75. Na. So, primarily, AS11 treatment, na, it is exchange loss 
to be recognized in P and L to loan to the extent of 3 lakhs. Like this loan will be increased by 3 lakhs by recognizing an exchange loss of 3 lakhs. I hope you are following. This is not only A16 sometimes. All of you. Okay. If what is alternative treatment? The standard says that this difference instead of directly recognizing in PNL, it can be recognized in an account called FC MITDA. Abdir account FC MITDA. Like that one account, you can recognize under this FC MITDA account can be amortized to PNL over the period of the loan equally over the period of the loan equally suppose the loan period one day or four years of dina then the three lakhs la or one fourth 75,000 will be transferred to PNL of this year 75,000 next year PNL like that it can be amortized all of you which means actual and the solrona either three lakhs immediately recognized there or 3 lakhs is getting amortized. Abdi render treatment available. Understood? When to follow what? It's not a question of when to follow what. It is not based on circumstances. It is based on the option adopted by that company. All of you. So, if they follow the first treatment, then treatment is entire amount will be recognized in PNL. If they follow second option, then it is initially recognized in this account FCMITDA. What is this FCMITDA? Foreign Currency Monetary Item Translation Difference Account. So, it is initially recognized in that account and every year some portion will be transferred to PNL. Hope you are understanding this. Clear? Okay, apo uh, exam le loan based pani question vanda. You should provide both the answer. If the entity opted for option one, this is a treatment. If the entity opted for option two, so it should be recognized in the second. Uh, I mean FCMITDA. Even if they don't give the period of loan and all, you should not be blinking. You should write theoretical answer. What is that? It is recognized in FCMITDA and amortized to PNL over the period of loan. Understood? Sir, that is the question. And the question is the information based on how well you can write. So, to the extent possible, your understanding can be written. Theoretically, you can write instead of committing with some numbers. All of you. Sorry, like this we are just taking my dear friends. Why I am telling this now? <coughs> See, uh, classifying investment into current and long term, we told it is not based on the dash period. It is always based on the dash period. Classifying investments into current and long term is never based on the actual holding period. It is based on the, it is based on the intended holding period. Now, Marga. It is not based on the actual holding period, it is based on the intended holding period. But example, question came in such a manner, they gave date of investment, amount of investment, market value of investment. The question was having date of investment, investment, cost of investment, market value of investment. Up into null investment given. Now classify and determine the correct value of investment. Classify the investment and determine the value given. All of you. Apo, actually all these four investments can be long term. Even if it is actually for one day also it can be long term. Depending upon dash. Depending upon dash. Intention. All of you. But on the question le, intention le, kudukala. Apo no other choice left there. Apo number which data we are doing the classification. No, on the date la, if the uh, investment or a period is within 12 months na, we will take it as current investment. Already crossed 12 months na, we should have taken this as long term investments. I hope you are following this everybody. So concept is based on the intention na. 
பட் இன்டென்ஷன் நாட் கிவன் ஐ ஷுட் சால்வ் தி ப்ராப்ளம்ல சால்வ் தி ப்ராப்ளத்துக்கு ஐ ஷுட் டு சம்திங் அப்ப தேர் பை ஐ டோன்ட் ஹேவ் எனி சாய்ஸ் லெஃப்ட் சோ தேர் இஸ் ஒன் இன்வெஸ்ட்மென்ட் மேட் ஆன் 1720 ஐ அம் டுயிங் ஆன் 31st மார்ச் 2022 அப்ப இட் இஸ் மோர் தென் 1 இயர் நா தென் நேச்சுரலி வி பீ கன்சிடரிங் லாஸ்ட் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் क्वेश्चन இஸ் வாட் ஐ அம் டெல்லிங் சோ in more than one year na then it is considered as long term investment other three are less than one year so we are taking as current investments i hope you are following this everybody okay appo based on the available information you should pro- provide the answers is what we are explaining my dear friends so with this we are understanding about this as 11 adha first part treatment did you understand the as 11 first part treatment sir as 11 la what and all you discuss sir as 11 la i discuss only one thing ட்ரான்சாக்ஷன்ஸ் இனிஷியலாக அந்த ரேட் பேலன்ஸ் ஷீட் டேட் அன்னைக்கு ரீஸ்டேட்டட் செட்டில்மெண்ட் அன்னைக்கு வில் ஃபைண்ட் அவுட் அனதர் டிஃபரன்சஸ் அண்ட் கெயின் ஆர் லாஸ் அக்கௌண்ட் இந்த ரெஸ்பெக்டிவ் பீரியட் லைக் தட் வி டோல்டு ஆல்டர்னேட்டிவ் ஆப்ஷன் கிவன் பை ஏஎஸ் லெவன் ஃபார் டேஷ் ஐட்டம்ஸ் ஒன்லி லாங் டேர்ம் மானிட்ரி ஐட்டம்ஸ் வாட் இஸ் ஆல்டர்னேட்டிவ் ஆப்ஷன்னா அந்த டிஃபரன்ஸ் வந்து யூ நீ நாட் புட் இன் டு பி என்எல் இமீடியட்லி புட் இன் டு திஸ் அக்கௌண்ட் கால்டு எஃப்சிஎம்ஐடிடிஏ and it is amortized over the period of the loan all of you and one more point there is that if that long term monetary item is relating to depreciable asset na then you should not be putting into fcmitda then exchange difference strictly should be adjusted against the value of the asset strictly should be adjusted against the value of the asset that also told but other based on examination question varadhu so i don't want to tell more things which is not expected from an examination perspective all of you appo this is as the first part next day, accounting for forward contract vaanga vaanga sir idu dhaan sir main appdi neenga vandu main ah wait pannirukalam illa already you have understood also forward contract forward contract forward contract na first of all enna appadina it's a contract for buying foreign currency or selling foreign currency on a future date at a predetermined price rate fix panitom ana i am going to buy or sell on a future date after 3 months i will buy 50000 dollar i will sell 50000 dollar at rupees 1 dollar equal to 60 abdinu or enter pandra contract na we call it as dash contract forward contract in the forward contract vande may be for hedging purpose or it may be for speculation purpose may be for hedging purpose or it may be for speculation purpose hedging abadina enna sir my dear friends after 3 months after 3 months i have dollar receivable i have dollar receivable or 40000 dollar i have receivable appo now uh, understand pandrad enna na so today if i look into the rate my dear friends dollar oda rate vande it is 1 dollar equal to 70 but i am finding 3 weeks before it was 75 now it is 70 if there is a chance that it might go up to 60 also all of you appo today if i get 40000 dollar i will be getting 28 lakhs but if it is going to become 60 rupees now i will get only 24 lakhs understanding ah i am not really uh, 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 i mean uh, giving any priority for the dollar value enak rupee value the important so i am finding it that future la 60 aachna 24 lakhs if it is 50 rupees na it will be 20 lakhs and ore fear ah irukke ayyo yo future la da i will be getting 40000 dollar appo enak 24 varuma 20 varuma 15 lakhs varuma i don't know depending upon the the rupee is getting strengthening there i hope you are following this understood rupee weak nagala rupee is getting strengthened appo i fear this adanal enna pandren okay ipo evanaadu bank kitta poi i am fixing a contract i will sell you dollar after 3 months now tell me a rate today abina he will quote some rate based on the projection he will say okay we will uh, buy at 65 rupees abina contract pote edikire understood ah அப்போ வாட் ஆம் ஐ டூயிங்னா மை ஃபியர் ஆஃப் லாஸ் வந்து அங்க கெட்டிங் அரெஸ்டட் ஓகே அப்ப மேக்ஸிமமா என்னோட லாஸ் வந்து 70 and 65 தான் அண்டர்ஸ்டூட் பிட் தி டிஃபரன்ஸ் बिटवीन 70 and 65 only ஐ ஹோப் யூ ஆர் ஃபாலோயிங் திஸ் एवरीबॉडी 
டுடே செவன்டி பா ஐ எம் நவ் என்ட்ரி டு கான்ட்ராக்ட் மார்க்கெட்ல நீ என்ன பிரைஸ் வேணா வரட்டும் வாட் எவர் த பிரைஸ் கம்ஸ் ஐ வில் செல் இட் யூ பா சிக்ஸ்டி ஃபைவ் ருபீஸ் அண்டர்ஸ்டூட் ஸோ இந்த ஒரு ஆக்ஷனுக்கு பேர் தான் ஹெட்ஜிங் ஆக்டிவிட்டி ஸோ நிறைய லாஸ் பற்றி ஃபியர் ஆகி ஒரு ஒரு டிரான்சாக்ஷன் என்டர் பண்ணுறேன் ஸோ டிரான்சாக்ஷன் என்டர் இன் டு எய்தர் டு அவாய்டு லாஸ் ஆர் மினிமைஸ் லாஸ் அதுக்கு பேர் ஹெட்ஜிங் புரிஞ்சுதா அப்போ ஃபியூச்சரில் வென் யூ ஹாவ் ஏ ஃபார்வேர்ட் கான் ஐ மீன் ஃபாரின் கரன்சி ரிசீவபிள் அதுக்கு கவுண்டர் பண்ண வென் யூ என்டர் இன் டு ஏ சேல் கான்ட்ராக்ட் ஆர் ஃபியூச்சரில் யூ ஹாவ் ஏ ஃபாரின் கரன்சி பேயபிள் அதை கவுண்டர் பண்ண யூஆர் என்டரிங் டு ஏ ஃபார்வேர்ட் பர்ச்சேஸ் கான்ட்ராக்ட் இதுக்கெல்லாம் பேர் தான் டேஷ் கான் டேஷ் கான்ட்ராக்ட் கான்ட்ராக்ட் என்டர்ட் இன் டு ஃபார் ஹெட்ஜிங் பர்பஸ் ஐ ஹோப் யூ ஃபாலோயிங் திஸ் சரி அப்போ ஹெட்ஜிங்காக இருந்தால் நம்ம என்ன பண்ணுவோம்னா we need not look into what will be the subsequent prices and all henceforth market price change agada padi worry de panna vendam tomorrow what date next date no 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 70 appo contract chula you are agreeing for 65 in the difference ah ungaloda maximum loss understood that should be deferred over the period of the contract the difference between the spot rate the difference between the spot rate and the contract rate and the contract rate should be recognized as gain or loss which should be amortized which is be amortized over the period of the contract suppose my dear friends in the contract is falling between 1321 to 1621 abina then it should be amortized over this 3 months appo 1 month for 2021 no 2 months for 2122 21, abadi amortize pannanum hope you are understanding this all of you இது ஹெட்ஜிங் ஹெட்ஜிங் இல்லையா ஸ்பெக்குலேஷனா ஸ்பெக்குலேஷனா இருந்தா தென் யுவர் கெயின்ஸ் அண்ட் லாஸ் இஸ் நாட் கோயிங் டு பி அரெஸ்டட் இட் இஸ் நாட் ஃப்ரீஸ்ட் ஸோ தென் வாட் இஸ் மை கெயின் ஆர் லாஸ் டுடே இட் இஸ் செவன்டி இரலவன் ஃபார் மீ ஐ ஹாவ் என்டர் இன் டு அ கான்ட்ராக்ட் ஃபார் சிக்ஸ்டி ஃபைவ் ருபீஸ் அப்போ சிக்ஸ்டி ஃபைவ் ருபீஸுக்கும் அண்ட் ஆக்சுவலாக இந்த கான்ட்ராக்ட் இஸ் கெட்டிங் ரியலைஸ் அன்னைக்கு இருக்கிற எக்ஸ்சேஞ்ச் ரேட் த எக்ஸ்சேஞ்ச் ரேட் மை டியர் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் so exchange rate on the expiry of contract exchange rate on expiry of contract that difference will be booked as gain or loss at the time of settlement at the time of settlement it is not getting amortized so moon rate iruk so 1420 i mean 1321 1621 அப்புறம் கான்ட்ராக்ட் ரேட் கான்ட்ராக்ட் ரேட் 1621 இந்த மூணு ரேட் ஹெட்ஜிங் ஆர்ந்தா டிஃபரன்ஸ் बिटवीन தீஸ் 2 ஷட் பீ டேக்கன் இஃப் இட் இஸ் ஸ்பெகுலேஷன் ஆர்ந்தா டிஃபரன்ஸ் बिटवीन கான்ட்ராக்ட் ரேட் அண்ட் ஆக்சுவல் ரேட் அட் எக்ஸிஸ்ட் அட் எக்ஸ்பயரி ஆஃப் தி கான்ட்ராக்ட் ஷட் பீ டேக்கன் அஸ் கெயின் ஆர் லாஸ் அண்ட் என்டையர் கெயின் ஆர் லாஸ் இஸ் அக்கவுண்டட் அட் தி டைம் ஆஃப் செட்டில்மென்ட் ஐ ஹோப் யூ ஆர் ஃபாலோயிங் திஸ் hedging contract ah irundal difference between spot rate what do you mean by spot rate the rate prevailing on the date of entering into contract expiry kadaiyadu commencement of contract no contractual rate no. contractual rate na and the contract la solli irukkira rate i hope you are following this everybody appo final ah my dear friends romba complicate panna venda hedging ah irundaduna difference between commencement rate commencement rate adha spot rate solluvom and simple common sense ga we understanding as commencement rate layman understanding commencement rate and dash rate commencement rate and contractual rate contractual rate in the amount amortized over the period of the contract amortized over the period of the contract this is for hedging speculation means my dear friends it is difference between contractual rate and and the uh, rate that will prevail at the time of expiry of the contract entirely recognized on settlement on settlement no amortization ivulada i hope you are following this everybody okay idu uh, just understand about the treatment based on this particular uh, hedging and speculation my dear friends so eppadi hedging and speculation ah namakku theriyuna if the question says that they have a receivable to counter that they are entering into contract na adu hedging contract simply only 
forward contract to buy or sell is entered na adu speculation contract is what we should understand my dear friends idu over next we have translation rules which you should learn through the foreign branch problem my dear friends integral foreign operation non integral foreign operation integral foreign operation la we classify items into monetary non monetary non integral foreign operations p and l account items balance sheet items so here all the monetary items translated by using closing rate non monetary items actual rates difference vand exchange gain or loss exchange gain or loss in p and l and non integral foreign operation p and l actual rates all the balance sheet items using closing rate including plant and machinery land and building stock even though they are are uh, non monetary items even such items also will be translated by using closing rate difference vand will be recognized as foreign currency translation reserve ipadike adu avlo dhan solla mudiyum foreign branch problem marakama solve panni paarenga so the high chance iruk examination la so namba or 3 4 sums we solved no so those problems definitely should practice and go all of you with this we are concluding on to as 11 shall we okay ipo as 10 property plant and equipment as 10 property plant and equipment my dear friends accounting standard 10 property plant and equipment what it's a Uh, coverage wise or uh, the content wise it's very lengthy standard examination gana sala focused area alone you should be learning my dear friends so property plan and document what is ppe abina it is like no uh, tangible items held for use in production or supply of goods or services uh, rendering of services use uh, uh, for rental purpose administrative purpose blah 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 things my dear friends property plant and equipments la specific exclusion enna appadina biological assets biological assets adukapra wasting assets idu rendume excluded from property plant and equipments biological assets appadina it is living animal adhe mari living plants living plants so living animal living plants idu vande Uh, biological assets or where other nanachukura biological assets living animal living plants so it excluded but my dear friends romba important ah inga vande other than bearer plant other than bearer plant what is this bearer plant adukku munadi what do you mean by this other than bearer plant na bearer plant appadina it is a biological asset it is a biological asset but as it is applicable AS10 is applicable. Generally, AS10 is not applicable to biological asset. But if it is a bearer plant, na even though it is a biological asset, AS10 is. Say it again. AS10 is applicable. It is applicable. Super. Sorry. What is a bearer plant? Bearer plant. Abdi na na na. A plant which is used for producing agricultural produce. Edo oru produce produce pannu. it bear such produce for more than 12 months it bear such produce for more than 12 months then the plant itself should not be the produce the plant itself should not be the produce the plant should not be itself the produce so is what we are understanding my dear friends so moon condition adu agriculture produce generate pananu it should bear the produce for more than 12 months the plant itself is not agriculture produce which means i grow tea wood sandal uh, tree uh, uh, different uh, plants i grow for the purpose of timber for the purpose of timber adala vandu 10 lakhs 20 lakhs 30 lakhs so sandal wood uh, tree and all when i uh, when i uh, cut and all no so we can become crorpadis don lagala you have seen pushpa movie no so adalla bearer plant illa they are not bearer plant the plant itself is the producer so thereby it is not bearer plant all of you 
so barren plant na it should bear some uh, fruit vegetable and the mari it should bear something and it should bear it for more than 12 months so the mango apple orange idellame vande we are understanding as barren plant adukku we can apply as ten anyway chumma oru oru introduction ukaga what is barren plant abdinu sometimes oru case study question can come so core accounting my dear friends core accounting we have initial recognition initial recognition subsequent expenditure subsequent recognition initial recognition subsequent expenditure subsequent recognition subsequent recognition adikapra issues relating to depreciation issues relating to depreciation so idu da vandu major a examination la varapora area my dear friends initial recognition subsequent expenditure subsequent recognition depreciation actually we have discussed some 10 different areas for the purpose of standards coverage we discuss about subsequent change in the dismantling liabilities adikapra retirement and disposal and very so many things and all examination perspective or very areas i am discussing initial recognition abadina very first time when this asset coming into existence we fix a value you know initially it will be recognized as cost appo what is the cost of pp what is the cost of pp my dear friends appo cost of pp depends upon it is acquired or self constructed self constructed acquired for cash acquired for consideration other than cash so like that we understand so whenever it is acquired for cash my dear friends it is purchase price minus trade discount if any plus non refundable duties and taxes it is based money mostly many many times question varu they will give you purchase price discount rate non refundable duties and taxes plus all directly attributable expenses till the asset is capable of operating in the manner intended by the management abdinu words irukku in other words till it is ready for use intended use till it is ready for intended use abdinu da concept but the wordings in the standard is till it is capable of operating in the manner intended by the management abdinu words anyway namma complicate panna vendam so all directly attributable expenses இதெல்லாத்தையும் ஆட் பண்றது தான் யூர் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்டிங் ஆஸ் தி வேல்யூ ஆஃப் தி அசெட் ஐ ஹோப் யூர் அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்டிங் திஸ் அல் ஆஃப் யூ ஒன் மோர் அமௌண்ட் இது இல்லாமல் ஆட் பண்ண வேண்டியது ஸோ நியூவா இன்ட்ரடியூஸ் ஒன்று என்னன்னா த பிவி ஆஃப் டிஸ்மேண்ட்லிங் லைபிலிட்டி ப்ரெசன்ட் வேல்யூ ஆஃப் டிஸ்மேண்ட்லிங் லைபிலிட்டி ஷுட் ஆல்சோ பி கன்சிடர்ட் ப்ரெசன்ட் வேல்யூ ஆஃப் டிஸ்மேண்ட்லிங் லைபிலிட்டி ஃபார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் மை டியர் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் மிஷினரி purchased for purchase or list price missionary list price it is 50 lakhs missionary list price vand 50 lakhs all of you okay adukaparam uh, trade discount 10 percentage non refundable tax it is 8 lakhs non refundable tax 8 lakhs transportation cost 2 lakhs installation cost 3 lakhs trial run cost uh, 4 lakhs trial run cost 4 lakhs adukaparam inauguration cost inauguration cost it is uh, 2 lakh 50000 pv of dismantling liability pv of dismantling liability it is uh, 5 lakhs apo what is the value of this asset what is the value of asset abina 50 lakhs minus trade discount of 10% is is 5 lakhs man this let this be some uh, 1 lakh 50000 so 50 lakhs minus 10 percentage so it is 5 lakhs to be deducted 50 lakhs la 5 lakhs deducted so you get 45 adikapram 8 lakhs to be added 2 lakhs to be added 3 lakhs to be added trial run cost should be added is trial run cost to be added trial run cost to be added inauguration cost to be added before the missionary started usage 
அன்றைக்கி அந்த ப்ரொடக்ஷன் கமன்ஸ்மெண்ட் அன்றைக்கி கொஞ்சம் நல்ல இனாகிரேஷன்லாம் பண்ணி பண்ணுறோம் அந்த கா ஷுட் பி ஆடேட் நோ இட் ஷுட் நாட் பி ஆடேட் இனாகிரேஷன் கா ஷுட் நாட் பி ஆடேட் PV of dismantling liability should also be added. What is the dismantling liability? Na? After some 20 years of usage of the asset, the asset should be dismantled. And the dismantling, ke, we needed to hire the professionals to whom we should make a professional fee of 3 lakhs. And the 3 lakhs paid, eh, pro- dismantling liability may be 3 lakhs, but it is after 20 years our today's value how much abdina it is only 1.5 lakhs even that also has to be added thereby my dear friends it is 53 55 58 62 it is 63.5 lakhs i hope following the uh, you are following this everybody okay apo pv of dismantling liability na an amount of expenditure that will be incurred to dismantle this to um, completely you know uh, uh, yeah so uh, destroy this particular asset sometimes nuclear plant or power plants required this particular destruction required by the professionals so such professional fees should be discounted to the present should also be considered as part of the value of the asset all of you sorry ipo exchange with other asset my dear friends if it is exchange with other assets konjo fast a povendi irukke time illa anal da tension agara exchange with other assets my dear friends if it is exchange with other assets all of you there active working la so many things i would have discussed in the classroom classroom of dinner the, uh, the videos that you have seen there are so many things you would have discussed don't get confused and now whenever there is exchange then generally it should be recognized as fair value it should be recognized as fair value i hope you are following this everybody so ad enna fair value abadina my dear friends i have uh, there is a company called x limited pa there is a company called x limited x limited is having one intangible asset intangible asset y limited is having a pp in the intangible asset oda book value book value vandu 5 lakhs and pp oda book value vandu 20 lakhs 20 lakhs idoda fair value fair value my dear friends 6 lakhs idoda fair value it is uh, 17 lakhs 17 lakhs all of you ipo x limited x limited acquire pp exchanging with intangible asset apo what should be the value in the books of what is the entry in the books of x limited so entry journal entry in the books of x limited n if no other information given na i told that we purchase ppe we are not negotiating any price we are not going to settle difference in cash and all we are going to simply buy this ppe apo ppe should be recognized as fair value which fair value abdina fair value of the asset acquired or fair value of the asset given up whichever is more clearly evident whichever is more clearly evident adalla question should tell which fair value is more clearly evident if they don't say anything na generally we should take fair value of you already discussed in a few standards we should take fair value of yes navin very good so as 13 we'll discuss but that concept will be applying we should take fair value of dash asset given up fair value of asset given up upon the property plan and equipment order value will be taken as 6 lakhs property plan and equipment will be taken as 6 lakhs credit intangible asset credit intangible asset how what is that value to be taken whatever as it goes away from my books eh, will be eliminated only at book value whatever where this asset is going away how how much be eliminated na it is 5 lakhs and the difference is called uh, profit on exchange the difference is called uh, profit on exchange is what we should be understanding all of you sir suppose my dear friends in the intangible assets or a fair value we don't know it is not at all given 
it is not given na then we should take fair value of the asset acquired appo suppose if we don't know the fair value na overall only i'm going to discuss i'm going to know, i'm not going to make journal entries then what is that entry will be what will be the entry suppose okay suppose fair value of intangible asset not determinable not determinable then ppe will be recognized that 17 lakhs credit intangible asset at credit intangible asset adu 5 lakhs da adu 5 lakhs da credit profit on exchange 12 lakhs like that you should make entry all of you seri suppose my dear friends fair value of both the assets not determinable this asset fair value we don't know that asset fair value we don't know na then what we should do my dear friends in the classroom of 8 hours we spend for this standard you have discussed little more thing about commercial substance lacks commercial substance has commercial substance and mari illa adala you need not be getting confused examination bus speed ivlo porom therbe idella pure to pure or simple layman kana discussion for approaching the examination questions that's all okay so in that case book value i mean fair value if it is not known na then we should take book value book value of asset given up if no fair value given then entry will be pp debit dash value how much pp debit 20 lakhs ah no book value correct ana book value of asset given up da there is no book value of asset acquired or given whichever is more clearly evident no book value portu vare strictly book value of asset given up da so thereby it is pp debit 5 lakhs to intangible asset 5 lakhs so book value concern aduva iduva doubt e varakudade only book value of the asset given up is the cost of pp i hope you are following this everybody so that is how you should be considering my dear friends rent fair value kudta which fair value to be taken rent fair value kudta fair value of the asset given up da adu illana can i take fair value of asset acquired na yes you can take it all of you as far as book value is concerned strictly it is the book value of the asset given up is what you should understand so it is exchange transaction understood okay as far as uh, cost is concerned my dear friends cost is concerned uh, inclusion exclusion based pani question can come my dear friends so it is there in the rtp so you should know uh, directly attributable cost abdin sonna enna la cost abdina we have employee cost cost of site preparation cost of site preparation or missionary vaangrom we need a uh, or even place so without any like you know or uneven space all or even space ga we are doing some alteration work to the existing building na adu will be considered as part of the missionary cost all of you which is called cost of site preparation employee cost means so if employee used for supervision of production i mean production of uh, construction of that particular asset installation of that particular asset then the employee's cost should also be capitalized then my dear friends we have delivery cost installation cost various handling cost uh, trial run cost professional fees professional fees so i i have missionary x y z which missionary i have to buy abindra decide panna i am consulting a professional on the professional fees uh, can i add to the cost of missionary i have final decided that i will buy missionary y X Y Z confusion. So the Y wrong no. That is, I took one consultation from a professional. Whether that consultation fee can there be added to the cost of the missionary? It can be added. Professional fees can be added to the cost of the missionary. It is a directly attributable expenditure only. So thereby, my dear friends. So if I have consulted a professional to acquire one particular asset, then that particular professional fees either in designing. or in deciding their uh, 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 various other qualitative aspects of the missionary if we hired any professional and the professional fee should also be added to the cost of the as asset i hope you are following everybody sorry similarly exclusion my dear friends we exclude abnormal cost 
so any general administrative overhead general administrative overheads any inauguration cost inauguration cost advertisement cost relocation cost idala excluded my dear friends abnormal cost general administrative overheads relocation cost exactly so we have we have a missionary worth rupees 50 lakhs 50 lakhs in chennai in chennai now we are shifting this chennai missionary to coimbatore by incurring 1 lakh rupees cost 1 lakh rupee transportation cost we are incurring just for transporting to coimbatore our high sensitive missionary so nalla or pak Uh, 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 transportation is required. We spend one lakh to transport this missionary from Chennai to Coimbatore. Apo, on the missionary or in the one lakh what we spent, uh, can I add to the cost of the missionary? All of you, can I add up? I cannot add up. We should not. Either way, I am buying a missionary from Chennai to be used in Coimbatore. I am buying a missionary from Chennai to be used in Coimbatore from an external vendor. From an external vendor, this transportation cost can I add? I can add. So Coimbatore, like it was used for two years. In Coimbatore, it was used for two years. All of you. Again, from Coimbatore, I am transporting this missionary after two years to Madurai. Upon the transportation cost, can be added? No, our first time when I am buying from external vendor, transportation cost and all can be added, my dear friends. After it is already capitalized and started using, later on it is shifted from one place to another place. Now, then any other transportation cost cannot be added. That is called relocation cost. I hope you are following this, everybody. Sir, so that way we are understanding about the initial recognition. What and all can be considered as part of cost? when you buy for cash similarly when you exchange with other assets understood when it is self constructed all the material labor overheads expenditure should be added material labor overhead expenditure should be added our important point and any abnormal cost abnormal wastage of material uh, the abnormal labor cost these things should be excluded in the uh, self constructed property plan and equipment this point you should be remembering all of you Okay, the initial recognition, my dear friends. Initial asset is started used. Later on, you are incurring some more expenditure. We call this as subsequent expenditure. Whenever you incur subsequent expenditure, my dear friends, if it is day-to-day -day servicing cost, general service cost, maintenance cost, abdi na, it is expensed. any major part replaced major part replaced it is always capitalized earlier we will look into whether it increases the efficiency of the asset whether it increases the life of the asset all these things we consider to decide whether to be capitalized or not now it is not so now it is not so my dear friends if any major part is replaced it should be capitalized it should be added understood so we need not check whether it increases efficiency or not or part some substantial part in the replace pandrona it has to be capitalized adhe maadhiri major inspection cost abdina edavadhu kodutha adhiyum capitalize pannano we already explained that in the classroom in relation to aircraft plant power plant all these things my dear friends requires certification uh, by checking every part my dear friends apo there will be so much of cost incurred for inspection of every component eh? so such inspection fees vand normally we say maintenance expenses no 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 the standard says that it is required and thereby it has to be capitalized it has to be capitalized all of you is a treatment for subsequent expenditure my dear day to day servicing cost is expensed any part replaced it is capitalized major inspection cost should also be capitalized now examination la kekkudiya rendu important areas we are going to discuss now my dear friends 
ஒன்று சப்சிக்வெண்ட் ரெக்கக்னேஷன் வாட் இஸ் சப்சிக்வெண்ட் ரெக்கக்னேஷன் அப்படின்னா வென் வி ப்ரிப்பேர் பேலன்ஸ் ஷீட் இட் இஸ் பியோர்லி அசோசியேட்டட் வித் சப்சிக்வெண்ட் பேலன்ஸ் ஷீட் பேலன்ஸ் ஷீட் ப்ரிப்பேர் ஆஃப்டர் த இனிஷியல் ரெக்கக்னேஷன் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் டைம் அசட் கேம் இன் டு எக்ஸிஸ்டன்ஸ் சப்சிக்வெண்டாக வி ஆர் ப்ரிப்பேரிங் பேலன்ஸ் ஷீட் in that balance sheet so we are not doing any transaction here we are just going to prepare balance sheet books la asset is showing some 20 lakhs if adhe 20 lakhs we should show illa some other value we should show abindra we are going to discuss appa sub that is called subsequent recognition the standard says that we can follow either cost model or you can follow revaluation model it's purely your option you can choose as your accounting policy you can choose as your accounting policy either you can follow cost model or you can follow revaluation model cost model abadina in the balance sheet it will be shown at cost less accumulated depreciation and the revaluation model la you should be showing the asset at the fair value at the fair value generally market price is the fair value you already defined so many places what is fair value market price abindra understand panninga or understanding kaga so it should be recognized as fair value i hope you are following this everybody seri appo books la or value then if it is brought to fair value na then some increase or decrease will happen no that is considered as revaluation profit or loss revaluation profit or loss but we should know if you go for this revaluation model where you are going to show a fair value na definitely some extra gain or loss will arise what is the treatment of such gain or loss which you should be knowing it but we will discuss that what is the treatment my dear friends if it is revaluation gain na it will be credited to revaluation reserve if it is revaluation loss means it will be debited to pnl if it is revaluation loss means it will be debited to pnl revaluation profit na it is credited to revaluation reserve and directly taken into balance sheet it should not be an income in the pnl anyway so once again we have two model cost model revaluation model so for revaluation model abadina suppose 1421 1421 purchased for purchased machinery for 30 lakhs purchased machinery for 30 lakhs life under 10 years life under 10 years 31st march 2022 31st march 2022 fair value fair value my dear friends it is 35 lakhs 35 lakhs now tell me my dear friends if you follow fair value model that is revaluation model whether you should charge depreciation should you charge depreciation if you are going to follow revaluation model should you be charging depreciation abina yes depreciation should be charged irrespective of the model you follow depreciation should be charged irrespective of the model you follow cost model la thala should charge depreciation fair value model la thala should be charging depreciation all of you ஓகே சரி அப்போ இஃப் யூ ஆர் ஃபாலோயிங் காஸ்ட் மாடல் நோ ப்ராப்ளம் ஒரிஜினலி பர்ச்சேஸ் ஃபார் தேர்ட்டி லேக்ஸ் டென் இயர்ஸ் லைஃப் அப் வாட் இஸ் டிப்ரிசியேஷன் ஃபார் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் இயர் வாட் இஸ் டிப்ரிசியேஷன் ஃபார் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் இயர் வாட் இஸ் த டிப்ரிசியேஷன் ஃபார் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் இயர் இட் இஸ் த்ரீ லேக்ஸ் டிப்ரிசியேஷன் ஃபார் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் இயர் இஸ் த்ரீ லேக்ஸ் ஓகே நவ் இஃப் யூ ஃபாலோ ரீவேல்யூவேஷன் மாடல் இஃப் யூ ஃபாலோ ரீவேல்யூவேஷன் மாடல் யூ ஷுட் பிரிங் த அசெட் டு தேர்ட்டி ஃபைவ் லேக்ஸ் நோ making the asset to 35 lakhs should be done after charging first year depreciation or before charging first year depreciation in other words you should do revaluation you should do revaluation appa first year depreciation then revaluation illa first year revaluation then depreciation by 31st march 2022 what should you do first first dash next dash what if you follow revaluation model it's an option given it's an option to you either you follow cost model or revaluation model yeah so thereby it should be first depreciation should be charged then only we should do revaluation about 30 lakhs la 3 lakhs is depreciated so 27 lakhs in the 27 lakhs da you should make it to 35 lakhs about what is the revaluation profit what is the revaluation profit
35 lakhs apo revaluation profit is 8 lakhs so it is not 5 lakhs revaluation profit it is 8 lakhs revaluation profit which is credited to what revaluation reserve which is credited to revaluation reserve apo revaluation loss debit in pnl revaluation profit credited to revaluation reserve revaluation loss debit pnl revaluation profit credit revaluation reserve credit revaluation reserve i hope you are following everybody oh it is a basic treatment eh? but my dear friends suppose you are doing a revaluation which is a subsequent revaluation which is a subsequent revaluation already in the past year also it is revalued when you are doing subsequent revaluation when you are getting profit normally we credit what normally we credit what subsequent revaluation we are getting profit normally we credit what what is revaluation profit asset value increases asset value increase Ab asset debit credit what revaluation reserve but standard says that if there was any loss accounted in the past if there was any loss accounted in the past then to the extent of the loss what have you done in the past and the loss of what did you do in the past in the past you would have respond banana debited p and l very good so you have debited p and l now to that extent to that extent now that the p and l should be credited p and l should be credited so first time you had a loss of 3 lakhs subsequently you are having a profit of 5 lakhs but what is the entry now asset account debit 5 lakhs profit now asset increasing credit p and l to the extent of 3 lakhs credit revaluation reserve to the extent of 2 lakhs i hope you are following this everybody upon which means when you do the subsequent revaluation previous effect if any should be reversed then the you should give original treatment original treatment what debit loss na debit pnl profit na credit revaluation reserve adu okay but to before giving this previous effect should be reversed so that is what we should be knowing similarly suppose first time profit of 4 lakhs subsequently there is a loss of 5 lakhs Ab what is accounting entry you think in that case first time profit you credit a revaluation reserve now you are getting a loss of 5 lakhs basic treatment of loss what debit p and l but you don't debit p and l even before debiting p and l debit revaluation reserve whatever you have created in the past to the extent of 4 lakhs debit p and l to the extent of 1 lakh credit asset to the extent of 5 lakhs i hope you are understanding the treatment of revaluation profit or loss all of you following a huh? okay ella in the stage la irukinga nu therla bounce started a illa still going a still going in a illa still going above the head i don't know i hope you are all following everybody or two and a half hours la crash panna adukapra you go through the problems concept we are going to discuss okay fine so that way we are understanding about this revaluation treatment my dear friends as far as depreciation is concerned depreciation is going to be based upon the depreciable amount so cost minus residual value this is called depreciable amount and this depreciable amount over the useful life it should be depreciated in a systematic manner means in a particular method depreciation method cost minus residual value depreciable amount should be depreciated over the a uh, useful life by following some method some method so which may be like you know wdv method slm method uh, units of production method either method which is uh, reflecting the pattern of economic benefits all of you okay now listen carefully my dear friends every year every year this the residual value useful life depreciation method shall be reviewed shall be reviewed in the moon may residual value life method is a review panano in a review panano life under the estimated number now 10 years now 
Later on we understand, you not 10 years, 8 years, not 8 years, 12 years, not 12 years, 15 years. Residual value, after 10 years how much I will get? 5 lakhs. Then few number of years later I understand, you, you, we will not, we'll not get 5 lakhs, we will get only 3 lakhs. So in the amount alone keep on changing because they are all dash numbers, estimated numbers, all of you. Similarly, method. Method should reflect the pattern of benefits. What is this pattern of benefits? Earlier I thought that the benefit from this asset will be same in all the years. So thereby I was following SLM. Now I understand that ah, yeah, yeah, benefit is not same in every year. Benefit is keep on decreasing every year. So I want to follow WDV method, not SLM method. All of you. Like this changes happen, Sabrina. Then the standard says that you should change the depreciation on a prospective basis. Depreciation shall be changed on a prospective basis. Prospective basis by considering by considering remaining depreciable amount remaining depreciable amount and remaining useful life remaining depreciable amount and remaining useful life which means you should not do anything retrospectively so you are suddenly changing into WDVR yeah. ok you change it but not on a retrospective basis only on a prospective basis including change in method of depreciation because change in method of depreciation is henceforth in fact so many years from 1416 onwards it is no longer change in accounting policy change in method of depreciation is only change in accounting estimate change in method of depreciation is only change in accounting estimate and not change in accounting policy i hope you are understanding this all of you In foundation you studied a very good pass. Super. So, AS10. It is 7 and a half hours, 8 hours chapter, topic. But simple, simple. Revaluation question. Depreciation question. Then whether these expenditure can be added to the cost of the asset or not. Is it directly attributable expenditures or not? Are the base money the simple questions will come from the property plan and equipment. All of you. Okay, Siri. Suppose, my dear friends, cost one 20 lakhs. Cost 20 lakhs. Today's fair value. Today's fair value 30 lakhs. Today's fair value 30 lakhs. Apo, useful life 5 years na. Should this asset be depreciated? Is there a fair value 30 lakhs? Is there a fair value? Today's market price 30 lakhs. Is the asset should be depreciated? Yes, we should depreciate even if the market price, even if the fair value exceeds more than the cost, still we should be definitely be charging depreciation. I hope you are following this everybody. Okay, suppose my dear friends, cost 20 lakhs, life on the 5 years, if a residual value after 5 years, residual value after 5 years is going to be 24 lakhs. Should this asset be depreciated? Residual value after 5 years, and the model possible asset. Yes, possible. You constructed a building bar. In the building when the cost 20 lakhs. After 5 years, you want to dispose the building. Apo, building or a value along good, there is appreciable possible. So thereby we understanding that after 5 years, we expect building value to be 24 lakhs of then there is no need for charging depreciation. So, but today's market price higher, lower, doesn't matter, you should charge depreciation. But at the end of life of the asset, still the recovery is going to be more than cost, you know? there is no need for charging depreciation. Are the base funny or question is there in the RTP? You should be definitely going through that question, all of you. Last two RTP le, or question irukke, adhi yin yin go through pannunga, okay? In fact, all the RTP accounting standard question, you should be going through at least four RTP question. That is more than sufficient for your examination preparation. With this, we are concluding on to AS10 property, plant and equipment. Shall we proceed further? Everybody.
my dear friends in as 13 investments primarily classified into current investment long term investments this current investment should be valued at valued at lower of cost and fair value question again and again coming current investment or valuation is lower of cost and fair value long term investments will be valued only at cost unless there is a unless there is a permanent decline permanent decline so which means i purchased for 1 lakh rupees today's market price 95000 rupees should i consider or should i not consider i purchased for 1 lakh after 3 months when i prepare balance sheet market price is 95000 should i consider i should i, I should not consider na current investment are the yes i should consider and i should value at 95000 only i hope you are following this everybody but if it is long term investments na i need not consider that 95000 i will still value only at 1 lakh it is wrong answer i hope you are following this i purchase one investment for 1 lakh after 3 months balance sheet date market price is 95000 now what is the value of investment if it is current investment then lower of these two long term investment only at 1 lakh but angi you should write theory what is that if the reduction of 5000 is a permanent decline then it should be valued at 95000 so in the valuation based money question comes from as 13 nothing beyond this ignore the area one the reclassification reclassification very very simple my dear friends current to long term current to long term i told you know and the captains from saurav ganguly to dhoni to kumble and all so which one more time captain i did one more time when current is getting transferred to long term will apply the same principle of dash we will apply the same principle of dash investment do you remember in the discussions so we will apply one more time the principle of current investment so reclassification from current to long term now we will apply one more time principle of current that is lower of lower of cost under fair value lower of cost under fair value i hope you are following this everybody okay it way long term into current investment long term into current investment my dear friends so we should consider long term into current na it is lower of lower of cost and carrying amount lower of cost and carrying amount so original or investment current le classify pannadhu later on become long term investments na so and the reclassification value how much of the entire area will also be tested in the examination my dear friends all of you as 13 la general testing is either valuation or reclassification either valuation of current and long term or reclassification all of you or example or question came in the form of like you know uh, workbook clear bank having so many investments so is it as per as 13 one simple answer what is the simple answer for banks as 13 is not applicable banks should account the investments only as per the rba guidelines so thereby the standard is not applicable for such bank you should be giving the answer my dear friends all of you okay so about that way we are understanding about as 13 nothing more than this but we have an investment account chapter we have taken for 20 hours so uh, investment accounts definitely one eight mark question is expected either from fixed income bearing securities or variable income bearing securities i may forget so in the meantime i find the last three examination again i didn't notice a problem on loss of profit in the other way you know pakshi solid that because of three examination we did not have loss of profit insurance claims left will be having a question from loss of profit probably most probably we might be having a question on loss of profit eight step approach remember all those eight steps my dear friends all of you okay now similarly similarly uh, either towards the end in my analysis in my analysis i'm just helping you that's all 
So I find that in the last question paper, we didn't have significant questions from uh, single entry and cash flow statement. Single entry and cash flow statement. Apo in the examination, okay, in the render topic, no significant uh, presence is expected, possible. So, we do what we do? In the last in the RTP, order, single entry sums, cash flow sums, please solve that. Foreign branch problem, loss of profit problem, loss of stock, order, loss of profit problem, definitely please uh, see and go, go through and go. Okay? This is not a good thing, sorry, I don't have to worry about it, I don't have to worry about it, it's just that analysis of the questions, you would have done this, so same way I have done, so I have analyzed, so yesterday evening, I have done this, four question paper, analyze it, as if I am going to write the exam, so there is a lot of chance of doing an analysis, so every question has got the potential of coming in the exam, because 125 marks, every one of the examiner will fit in, and more prominence, more chances based upon what did not came in the last exam. That's the vision. Understood? Okay. Anyway, going to the next standard, my dear friends, which is AS2, Inventory Valuation. So, definitely in the exam, sure AS2 question, I am expecting, my dear friends. So, it is Inventory, Valuation of Inventories, AS2. Very, very simple. Inventory is valuation. Inventory should be valued at lower of cost and NRV. Valued at lower of cost and NRV. Purchase price. Conversion cost. other cost, such other cost, NRV, estimated sales value, minus estimated cost of completion, minus estimated selling expenses. So, purchase price, conversion cost, other cost, NRV is estimated sale value minus estimated cost of completion minus estimated selling expenses. This is the NRV. Cost for the purchase price. Generally considered for raw materials. And if you are a trader means finished goods they will buy and sell. Conversion cost my dear friends consists of labor cost and overheads. Overhead cost consists of variable overheads and fixed overheads. It is very simple. Tha. Vari labor cost abdi na, actual labor cost should be added which is variable it is incurred only in relation to the number of units produced it is incurred similarly variable overheads also incurred actual in relation to the actual units produced all of you raw material abdi na. fixed overheads my dear friends should be allocated to the production cost fixed overhead should be allocated to the inventory cost based upon based upon dash I hope you remember this. I don't know. Can you recall this? Fixed to overhead should be allocated to inventory cost. Fixed to overheads. Allocated to inventory cost. Based on normal production. Based on normal production. Sorry. But if actual production, if actual production is higher, if the actual production is higher, Abdina, then it is going to be based on the actual production. Yes, Anirudh, very good. So, which means, sir, it is a normal capacity or actual production, whichever is higher, Abdi Yadhiklama, yes, fixed overheads allocated to the uh, inventories based on the normal production capacity, normal production capacity, whichever is lower, whichever is less, <coughs> Navin. whichever is higher, exactly, whichever is higher. So, my dear friends, um, for example, director, or just, uh, we are just taking this, so material, material, Raw material, 20,000 units, 
20,000 units cost to price rupees 40 per unit raw material 20,000 units rupees 40 per unit then my dear friends through demonstration I will explain the whole concept my dear friends so raw material is 20,000 units cost to price it is uh, 40 per unit variable cost I mean labor cost incurred rupees 4 lakhs labor cost incurred 4 lakhs variable overheads rupees 6 lakhs fixed overheads rupees 10 lakhs actual production Fifteen thousand units. Actual production fifteen thousand units. Unit sold twelve thousand units. Normal production, normal production sixteen thousand units. Now, what is the cost to price of finished goods? What is the cost to price of finished goods? I also provide like this raw material consumed only 15,000 units raw material consumed only 15,000 units so what is the cost price of closing stock of finished goods question is what is what is the cost price of closing stock of finished goods what is the cost to price of closing stock of finished goods? In the other question will come. What is the cost to price of closing stock of finished goods? So, Abhinaya has given 3,7500. So, raw material 20,000 units we have which is cost price 40 per unit. Consumption 15,000 units now. So, my dear friends, it is closing stock of inventories. So, closing stock of inventories. So, what is that? We have raw material cost, we have labor, we have variable overheads, fixed overheads. So, my dear friends, as far as raw material cost is concerned, it is, you can either compute in a, uh, separately also or total production cost also you can compute and you can accordingly arrive my dear friends, maybe total production cost if you are comfortable, raw material cost is 15,000 into 40, how much is that? 6 lakhs, labor cost how much? Labor cost is 4 lakhs, variable overheads? Variable overheads it is uh, 6 lakhs. Variable overheads it is 6 lakhs. Fixed overheads. Fixed overheads is 10 lakhs divided by 1 point, I mean 16,000 units. 16,000 units into 15,000. 10 lakhs divided by 16,000 into 15,000. So, what is that coming to? Fixed overheads should be allocated to inventories purely based on the normal production capacity or we can understand simple manner normal production capacity or actual production capacity whichever is higher in that basis we can take what is this number 10 lakhs by 16,000 into 15,000 
this 9 lakh 37 thousand thank you so what is the total amount what is the total 10 16 25 lakh 37 thousand 500 25 lakh 37,500 is a cost relating to our closing stock will be 25 lakh 37,500 divided by 15,000 into divided by 15,000 into how many units we have in the closing stock 3,000 where from we got 3,000 sir we produced 15,000 sold 12,000 our closing stock is 3,000 so accordingly my dear friends it is how much 3 lakh Five lakh seven thousand five hundred. Okay, so five lakh seven thousand five hundred. So is the value of closing stock. I hope you are understanding this. If all of you, one question is most of the times it will be based on the fixed to overhead allocation, my dear friends. Fixed to overhead allocation. In one, let me tell you, my dear friends, based on the NRV testing and all. So listen carefully. The second problem area that is possible from the inventory question is that. So let me give you some numbers here shall we okay so finished goods finished goods cost to price of cost to price of finished goods rupees 3 lakhs Cost to price of work in progress, it is 2,10,000. Market price of finished goods, three lakh thirty thousand. Estimated selling expenses, 10 percentage of sales value. 10 percentage of sales value compute the value of inventory as per as2 compute the value of inventory as per as2 so closing stock my dear friends we are just providing information closing stock inventory information of a company j limited so finished goods 3 lakhs WAP 2 lakh 10,000. We have 2. Then market price of finished goods given estimated selling expenses. What is as seen as selling expenses? 10 percentage of sale value. Compute the value of inventory as per AS2. Can you all quickly tell me what is the value of inventory as per AS2? What is the value of inventories? Inventories includes raw materials, work in progress, finished goods, everything. So what is the value of inventories as per AS2? What is the value of inventories as per AS2? What is the value of inventory as per AS2? So, we understand my dear friends, it should be valued at lower of cost in NRV. So, we have finished goods, we have WAP. First, cost to price. 3 lakhs and 2 lakh 10,000 NRV is 3 lakhs, I mean 3 lakh 30,000 minus 33,000. What is that number comes to? It is 2 lakh 97,000, 2 lakh 97,000. As far as NRV of WAP is concerned, please listen, we take market price of finished goods because we don't have market price for work in progress so we have only market price for finished goods minus estimated cost of completion minus estimated cost of completion which is 90,000 
which is 90,000. How do we get 90,000? Very simple part. WIP 2 lakh 10 finished goods 3 lakhs. Na. To make this WIP into finished goods, we need another 90,000. We need another 90,000. So it is 3 lakh 30,000. To get this 3 lakh 30 from this 2 lakh 10,000, I should incur 90,000 rupees minus minus 33,000 selling expenses. So what is the NRV of WAP? What is the NRV of WAP? It is 2 lakh. Seven thousand two lakh seven thousand. So thereby, my dear friends. So value of AS two AS two valuation. So as per AS two valuation, it is lower lower value. So that is two lakh ninety seven thousand and two lakh seven thousand. So thereby, it is uh, how much is the value? Five lakh and four thousand. 5 lakh and 4000 so cost of completion means what na the cost that needs to be incurred to convert wip into finished goods to convert wip into finished goods about where that 90000 was given 90000 is nowhere given in the question but we know finished goods would have cost 3 lakhs wip would have cost 2 lakh 10 if this wip to convert into finished goods in future will incur additional 90000 so which means if we want to get 3 lakh 30 thousand uh, in future i have to spend 90 thousand that 90 thousand is called uh, cost of completion i hope you understand this all of you Apo, combining both finished goods and wip base money like this a problem can come in the examination based on as2 practice the problems from the rtps my dear friends mostly all the rtps are in the same lines problems are given okay Apo, the valuation of this WAP and finished goods are lower of cost and NRV, lower of cost and NRV. Raw materials, my dear friends, for raw materials, NRV, it is cost and NRV, we use replacement cost. Usually, if we sell how much, we'll get, how much we will get, that is what NRV, but for raw materials, NRV is nothing but replacement cost. What is replacement cost? Now, today if I buy, how much I have to pay? Today if I buy, how much I have to pay is what we are understanding as NRV for raw material. We will take that as NRV and we should take whichever is lower. No, no. Raw materials alone, there is a small exception. What exception? Now, my dear friends, suppose raw material cost is 1000. NRV of raw material is 950, 950. So generally we might value this at 950, but the AS2 says no, no, don't consider this. Look into the status of finished goods. Suppose finished goods cost is 5000, NRV is 6000 my dear friends, or at least equal to 5000 now, which means we can recover this 1000. So raw material generally valued at cost always valued at cost only in one scenario it will be valued at nrv which scenario na it is nrv of finished goods is less than cost to price of finished goods and nrv of raw material is less than cost to price of raw material then only raw material is valued at raw material is valued at nrv otherwise always raw material will be valued at the cost to price hope you are following this one more time let me repeat raw material you need not apply cost on nr whichever is lower or air situation you should apply that principle when abdina finished goods or nrv is much less it is 4500 then nrv of raw material is less then raw material will be valued at NRV. I hope you are following this. Which means, even if NRV of raw material is less, even if NRV of raw material is less, if NRV of finished goods is more, then raw material will be valued at. Please answer that particular point. Raw material NRV less 
But finished goods order NRV more. Up raw material will be valued only at cost. Even though its NRV is less, it doesn't matter. Up the point also you should be knowing. All of you are the base one. You question is there in the RTP, my dear friends. So we will combine these three areas. One in the fixed overheads order absorption. So allocation. Number two, work in progress, cost of completion identification so uh, whenever you take nrv for wip then it is estimated sale value minus cost of completion minus selling expenses all these things will come in order raw materials dependent on finished goods are the base for the valuation in the three items the normal are getting tested from as2 nothing more than this my dear friends all of you as1 la if at all question comes don't really bother that's a the theory question the AS1 no numbers no computations pure to pure disclosure pure to pure disclosure what AS1 says significant accounting policy apply should be disclosed other based on the question in life most of the times questions are coming from change in accounting policy if you make any change in accounting policy then that has to be disclosed pa. You need not, you know, suppose like, you know, you find a half a paragraph answer in the suggestion answer. Don't worry about that. Don't get fear about, are you AS1 Puri loved in? You just mention so-and-so policy in your own language. You button in English, you just state that so-and-so policy changed in the current year from this to that. You know, you mention. Also mention the effect. So-and-so asset because of this change asset is getting increased by this match similarly effect on profit profit or loss is also getting affected by this match this is what you need to state if at all a question comes from as1 this time we are not expecting any question from as1 if at all question comes now most of the times whenever as1 question comes they will mention they were initially following this policy now they are following this policy give a disclosure then you should mention the fact that so and so policy is changed Similarly, effect should be disclosed. This because of this, stock will be increased by 5 lakhs. Profit will also be increased by 5 lakhs. Like that, you need to show. All of you. So, AS1 no computations, my dear friends. So, if a quick in the remaining or 5 minutes, the five minutes and end spend per now. Just want to mention about framework. Earlier and all in the framework and all neglected area. If almost in every examination, or five mark in question number six layer kara, or four out of five. Abdi in the questions la definite or question is getting coming, my dear friends. Right now, so framework. Yeah, obviously you need also mention the reason for change also because accounting policy can't be changed just like that based on whims and fancies. Uh, based on our wishes, we can't change. It, it is required by accounting standard. It will give better presentation of the financial statements. Like that also you should mention. Uh, Abhinan. Framework for preparation and presentation of financial statements. Le, there are so many areas we discuss for 3 hours. Now we 3 minutes to conclude. Pandro. Framework. This is an examination area. What you should understand. Na? Financial statement. Oda, users are not required. Objective of financial statement. Purpose of framework. Abhinan. So many things we discussed. Financial statements or characteristics. Financial statements characteristic. Sometimes your theory question in the expected irkala. What are the characteristics of financial statements? Or financial statement in the character irkono. In the character irkono, I have already told you. So or communication in the irkono, other irkono. Whatever today I am doing, no, that is what. What is the character? It should be understandable understandability sorry you are understanding whatever i am telling next it should be what relevant it should be relevant to you relevance uh, to and far so four important characters in the four important characteristics of financial statements of dina qualitative characters you know? so first to whatever i tell you should understand whatever i understand should be relevant to you Sorry, it is relevant to share. Pakka va relevant. Anna poi poi yes It should be reliable. So third character should be reliable. It should be comparable. It should be comparable. In the four important characteristics. So understandability, relevance, 
reliability, comparability, normal communication or features. Whatever I say you should understand. Understanding is not sufficient. It should be relevant to me. Relevant not to not sufficient. It should be reliable. 100% truth you should tell. Then it should be comparable with others. Okay. This is characteristics. Then my dear friends, in the last examination or before, they have already asked my dear friends. So we have elements of financial statements. Elements of financial statements. The elements of financial statements, asset, liability, income, expense, equity. Asset, liability, income, expense and equity. Since in the last examination, they have already tested a question based upon this. So, making an analysis, asset, liability, equity, opening balance. So, 10 lakhs, 4 lakhs. 6 lakhs then they give some transaction dividend received dividend received Apo what happens cash increases so dividend received 2 lakhs Apo it is 12 lakhs liability remains the same so equity becomes 8 lakhs like that you need to provide the effect of each and every transaction not accounting income expense and all just showing the asset and liability so uh, that is not required my dear friends as of now so this is elements of financial statement based analysis measurement basis measurement basis adume last examination tested what and all na historical cost current cost realizable value present value so i purchase one bike for 1 lakh historical cost today i can sell only for 90000 it is uh, uh, current cost then uh, I mean, today if I want to buy, I have to pay 130,000 to buy the asset again. It is current cost. Then realizable value. If I sell today, I will get only 70,000 realizable value. Present value means by using this bike in a race, I can earn 50,000 for next five years or a discounted value. So PV of future benefits, that is present value. Anyway, this measurement base also have already tested in the just concluded examination. Sorry. Aduthu the capital maintenance. Capital maintenance. My dear friends, what is capital maintenance? Umba simple pa. Your closing capital should be at least equal to opening capital. Your closing capital should be at least equal to opening capital. Understood? In other words, your closing capital minus opening in opening plus additional capital my dear friends should be either nil or positive either nil or positive i hope you are following this everybody which means whatever capital you had at the beginning as well as whatever you introduced there that much capital you should be minimum maintaining at the end which means you should not have taken home you should not have taken home i, I hope you are following this Apo, closing capital say it is 5 lakhs closing capital it is 5 lakhs Opening capital one day, what abdina you check. So if it is 4 lakhs abdina, then you find that this particular 1 lakh is the difference. So in the particular difference one day is nothing but retained profit. It is nothing but retained profit. Single entry concept I already explained you. The difference between capital is nothing but what? The difference between capital is nothing but profit or loss. But you also have additional capital drawings etc. and all. Now this 1 lakh represent that portion of the profit which you have not drawn this is the that portion of the profit which you have not drawn so, on the computation of capital maintenance is like this closing capital minus opening plus additional capital should be your retained profit this retained profit what you calculate should be positive or nil if it is positive or nil which means you have maintained adequate capital if it is negative na on the comments and our go the business have not maintained adequate capital. It is a capital maintenance concept. Capital maintenance concept. All of you. Sir, this is a concept. Moon concept. What is the concept? Financial capital at historical cost. Financial capital at current cost. That is physical capital maintenance. Financial capital uh, at historical cost. Financial capital at current cost, apro physical capital, my dear friends. Onnu So financial capital at historical cost, na 
actual closing capital, actual opening capital, you take it. Do you follow? Financial capital at current cost means then closing capital 5 lakhs you take. Now opening index you will take um, you will take the opening capital adjusted based on the price levels. So thereby suppose opening index was 100, closing index is 120. Na? Then even though opening you had 4 lakhs, and the other 4 lakhs on the closing date is not 4 lakhs, it should be a different value based on the index you should calculate. So that is what we are understanding as. So restating the opening capital in terms of current purchasing power. Restating the opening capital in terms of current purchasing power. Above 4 lakhs by 100 into 120. It is 4 lakh 80 thousand and accordingly you take it. You have physical capital maintenance. Study model Patha, you might understand that both are one and the same. Actually, they are not both are one and the same and all. So, uh, under physical capital maintenance, again we will use the same index and all. Only thing is, we will use different different index for different different assets and liabilities. We will use different different index for different different assets and liabilities. In the financial capital concept, we will use only an average index, average price index for the net capital amount. So, first of all, capital means what? Assets minus liabilities. Minus liabilities. This is what we are understanding as capital. If when you use index for the net capital amount, then that is called financial capital at current purchasing power. But when you use index for each of the assets separate separate index, missionary or index where vehicle or index where land and building or index where borrowing or index where index apply panni, then you find out the separate restated values of assets and liability and finding out capital na that is called physical capital. Anyway, other base panni question varadilla. So you will be having only these two concepts, my dear friends. Financial capital at historical cost, financial capital at current purchasing power. Even if they ask you also, they will give a different index for a physical capital maintenance. So, on the index it should be used and you should be finding out. If this is positive or nil, the business have maintained adequate capital. All of you. If it is negative, na, business have not maintained adequate capital. The business have not maintained adequate capital. Sorry. If over sum la, you are working like this. Suppose opening capital, opening capital, 7 lakhs. Closing capital, closing capital, 9 lakhs. Closing capital is 9 lakhs. At the government, they are also working out index. So opening index 100, closing index 130. Closing index 130. All of you now compute retained profit under um, financial capital at historical cost and financial capital at uh, current cost, current purchasing power, current cost. Abhi they are asking. So can you tell me what is retained profit under these two methods? Opening capital 7 lakhs, closing capital 9 lakhs. 100, 130. What is the retained profit and the historical cost and at the uh, current cost? Financial capital maintenance at current cost. So, under historical cost and current cost, financial capital maintenance. So, closing capital. Closing capital is 9 lakhs, render 9 lakhs da. Opening capital, it is actual amount, inga vandhi 7 lakhs by 100 into 130. It is 9 lakh 10,000. So here it is 2 lakhs and here it is 10,000 negative. So which means, under historical cost, the entity have maintained adequate capital. 
but if it is in terms of current cost you know the entity have not maintained adequate capital all of you okay appo question na they have also giving my dear friends drawings for the year adu inge adjust pannuma na inge adjust panna vendam suppose they are telling drawings is 50000 appo what is the maximum drawings they should do to maintain adequate capital suppose drawings already given as 50000 if indirect ipdi or question kekkara i am asking this question what is the maximum drawings that they should have done already drawings 50 pantaanga ipo but oru hypo oru uh hypothesis like i'm asking this question what should have been the drawings to maintain adequate capital what should have been the drawings to maintain adequate capital ha under the first uh, historical cost la the enterprise could have drawn could have drawn 250000 250000 could have drawn 250000 sir puriliy sir sir already they have drawn 50000 now in spite of that after drawing 50000 still they are having a balance of 9 lakhs no which means they are having a positive 2 lakhs so if you want to maintain exactly adequate capital na they could have drawn 250000 all of you but in the second second scenario la they can draw only maximum of they can draw only maximum of 40000 so they could have drawn only 40000 so what they have drawn was excess abdina comments pass panna vendi varu avladha i hope you are following this everybody ivula nama concept capital maintenance edho bayangara tough illa kedaiyadu closing ca opening capital should be at least equal to closing capital in other words closing minus opening difference should be either nil or positive understood which means that business have maintained adequate capital abdin understanding so and you know one more thing that closing capital is anyway after drawings na appo you may how to make a comment about drawings drawings excess of drawing short abdin the comments you may be asked to do i hope you are following this everybody easy concept நிறைய பேர் கன்ஃபியூஸ் ஆகுற ஏரியா பட் ஈஸி கான்செப்ட் செல்வி ஆனா இதெல்லாம் இல்லப்பா இந்த எக்ஸாமினேஷனுக்கு ஃப்ரம் திஸ் வாட் வி எக்ஸ்பெக்ட்னா எ ப்ராப்ளம் பேஸ் ஆன் த டெஸ்டிங் ஆஃப் கோயிங் கன்சன் எ ப்ராப்ளம் பேஸ் ஆன் த கோயிங் கன்சன் இந்த ஆர்டிபிலையும் இருக்கு ஸ்டடி மாடியிலையும் இருக்கு அண்ட் ஐ ஆல்சோ ஆஸ் யூ வித் அவுட் ஃபெயில் இந்த கிளாஸ் ரூம் ஆல்சோ வி டி டிட் ஐ ஆஸ் யூ டு கோ த்ரூ தட் பர்டிகுலர் ப்ராப்ளம் ஐடியா ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் அப்போ எ ப்ராப்ளம் assuming going concern no going concern so if there is no going concern na uh, all assets and liability should be shown at asset should be shown at expected realizable values liability should be shown at expected settlement values and the differences should be taken into pnl hope you remember all of you no going concern na uh, no amortization no amortization of expenditures or incomes no amortization of expenditure or income so definitely na oru oru pakshi solrudhu appadina vechukonga la so i expect a question uh, based on again the analysis of question papers i understand that there is a probability of a question that comes from going concern no going concern based money question which is already there in study module or people in repeat ayirukku without fail இந்த क्वेश्चन நீங்க பாருங்க ரொம்ப ஈஸி ப்ராப்ளம் ஆனா देयर இஸ் a chance it can come for 10 mark also நேர 10 mark க்கு இந்த क्वेश्चन வர चांसेस இருக்கு சோ ஒரு ட்ரேடிங் பிஎன்எல் பிரசன்டேஷன் ஈஸியஸ்ட் thing without fail அத ரிவைஸ் பண்ணிடுங்க ஓகே சோ வித் this uh, we now uh, come to the concluding stage my dear friends cash flow statement you know operating investing financing cash flow வராதுலாம் கிடையாது sometimes in the final accounts la a problem based on classifying items into current non current share application many pending allotment so adu base pannila or question there is a chance so adala chuma glance through pannunga pa so moreover in the next two days vande don't study anything new concept and all but practice all the last four rtp problems 
அதுக்கப்புறம் ரெண்டு சஜஸ்டட் ஆன்சர் அதாவது சால்வ் பண்ண அட்லீஸ்ட் ரன் த்ரூ பண்ணாவது ட்ரை பண்ணுங்கப்பா ஸோ இஃப் நாட் பாசிபிள் டு ப்ராக்டிஸ் யூ ஹாவ் ஃப்ரைடே யூ ஹாவ் சாட்டர்டே யூ ஹாவ் சண்டே டில் ஹாஃப் அ டே ஸோ இவ்வளோ டைம் இருக்குது ஸோ நிச்சயம் செம்மையாக பண்ண முடியும் ஸோ நான் தான் சொல்கிறேனே எனக்கு லாஸ்ட்டு எஸ்டர்டே பிஃபோர் எஸ்டர்டேலேருந்து ஏதோ நான் எக்ஸாம் எழுதுகிற போகிற ஒரு டென்ஷன் எப்போ எக்ஸாம் வந்தாலுமே சி எக்ஸாம் வந்தாலுமே அது ஒரு டென்ஷன் இருக்க தான் செய்யும் ஸோ உங்களுக்கும் அது இருக்கும் பட் அதை லிமிட்டாக வச்சுக்கோங்க பயப்படாதீங்கன்னா சொல்லலை ஒரு ஒரு லிமிட்டில் இருக்கிற ஃபியர் இஸ் ஆல்வேஸ் வெரி குட் அது ரொம்ப அவ்வளோ ஃபோக்கஸ் க்ரியேட் பண்ணும் டெடிக்கேஷன் க்ரியேட் பண்ணும் ஓவர் ஃபியர் அப்படின்னா அது அதுக்கப்புறம் யூ வில் பி கொலாப்ஸிங் அதே மாதிரி ஃபியர் இல்லைன்னா நிறைய மிஸ்டேக்ஸு கேஷுவலாக இருக்கிற நான் கேஷுவலாக இருக்கேன் கேஷுவலாக இருக்கேன்னு ரொம்ப ஓவராக ஜாலியாகவும் இருக்காதீங்க கரெக்டாக லிமிட்டாக வச்சுக்கோங்க ஓகே ஸோ நோ எக்ஸ்ட்ரீம்ஸ் ஆப்வியஸ்லி எக்ஸாக்ட்லி இஸ் வாட் வி ஆர் டெலிங் எக்ஸ்ட்ரீம்ஸாக இருக்கிறதுனால நம்ம எதுவுமே அச்சீவ் பண்ண போகிறது இல்லை எல்லாமே லிமிட்டாக இருக்கணும் நீங்கள் நல்லாலாம் ப்ரிப்பேர் பண்ணியிருக்கீங்க Uh, hours and hours of classes you have attended, 1400 hours plus classes attend பண்ணுறது இட்ஸ் நாட் ஏ ஜோக் ஸோ சம்வேர் இஃப் இட் இஸ் ஹிட் அண்ட் ஸோ ஐ எம் டெல்லிங் யூ அகெயின் த சேம் திங் வென் யூ ட்ரை டு ரீகால் த ஹோல் சப்ஜெக்ட் அட் ஒன் கோ எனக்கு என்ன வாட் டூ ஐ நோ இன் அக்கௌண்ட் வாட் டூ ஐ நோ ட்ராக்ஸ்னா நத்திங் வில் கம் டு பிளாங்க் ஸ்க்ரீன் தான் வில் பி ஷோன் பட் இஃப் யூ ஸ்பெசிஃபிக் கொஸ்டின் இஸ் ரேட் த நேச்சுரலி யோ பிரெயின் வில் அன்வைண்ட் திங்ஸ் அண்ட் வில் கிவ் யூ த ப்ராப்பர் ஆன்சர் So just be very very calm in the examination my dear friends. All of a deep breath. If you have a tension, all of a deep breath. If you have a little water, if you have a little water, if you have a little water, practice it. 100 marks attempt is a mantra. So 100 marks attempt is definitely you should do. There should not be any excuse for leaving any 4 marks, 5 marks. And the 1 hour proper assess. சிஎஸ்கே மாதிரி லாஸ்ட் ஃபோர் ஹவர்ஸ் ஆடாமல் வந்துடாதீங்க ஃபோர் ஹவர்ஸ் ஆடி தான் நிச்சயம் வின் பண்ணியிருப்பாங்க ஸோ அந்த மாதிரி நம்ம வந்து ஒரு எயிட்டி மார்க்ஸ் பெஸ்ட்டாக பண்ணுவோம் அப்படின்னு நான் இது இல்லை ஐ ஆல்வேஸ் பிலீவ் இன் திஸ் தியரி தேன் ஆவரேஜ் ஹண்ட்ரட் மார்க்ஸ் இஸ் மச் பெட்டர் தென் எக்ஸ்ட்ரா ஆனரி செவன்டி மார்க்ஸ் அட்டம் ஸோ அதனால் முடிஞ்ச அளவுக்கு அந்த ஹண்ட்ரட் மார்க்ஸ் கம்ப்ளீஷன் அப்படின்ற சாட்டிஸ்ஃபேக்ஷனோட வெளியே வாங்க ஓகே ஸோ ஆல் தி பெஸ்ட் ஃபார் யுர் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் நம்ம மறுபடியும் இன்னொரு நாள் மீட் பண்ணுவோம் வில் பி மீட்டிங் ஃபார் அட்வான்ஸ்ட் அக்கௌண்டிங் மை டியர் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் வில் மீட் ஃபார் த அட்வான்ஸ்ட் அக்கௌண்டிங் ஆல் த ஸ்டாண்டர்ட்ஸ் இதே மாதிரி டுவெண்ட்டி தேர்ட் அன்னைக்கு மார்னிங் ஒரு செவன் டு டென் வந்து வில் பி டேக்கிங் ஓகே ஸோ ஆல் தி பெஸ்ட் மை டியர் ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் ஸோ ஹரிணி இஸ் ஆஸ்கிங் அ டவுட் இட்ஸ் ஹவ் அ டவுட் இன் விச் கொஸ்டின் ஷுட் பி பாஸ் ஜேர்னல் என்ட்ரிஸ் இன் ஏஏ சிக்ஸ்டீன் டுவெல் டென் ஒன்லி இஃப் தி ஆஸ்கியூட் ஜேர்னல் வி ஷுட் மேக் ஜேர்னல் என்ட்ரி அதர்வைஸ் வி நீ நாட் டு எனி ஜேர்னல் என்ட்ரிப்பா Only if the question specifically ask you entries, give journal entries, we should make. Otherwise, no entries. Now, you go through all the questions from RTP, my dear friends. Okay? All the best. Hearty wishes. Do well. If you have doubts, please ask. Yeah, thank you. Bye-bye. We'll meet for advanced accounting. We'll meet for 13 standards. We'll do a rapid revision. Okay? Confident? Okay? Confident? All of you attempt. So, I don't know what I'm saying. Okay? Bye-bye. All the best. Okay? Bye-bye. All the best. What are you saying? Do you know what I'm saying? நம்ம ரிவிஷன் பண்ணியிருக்கோம் அவ்வளோதான் இது அடிக்குவேட்டா இன்னடிக்குவேட்டா அப்படின்றது உங்கள் ப்ரிப்பரேஷன் ஐ டோன்ட் நோல டூ வெல் யா எஸ் ஆயிராமநாதன் ஆல் தி பெஸ்ட் பாய் தேங்க்யூ ஃபைன் ஸோ படிங்க டைம் வேஸ்ட் பண்ணாதீங்க போய் சாப்பிடுங்க படிங்க ஆல் தி பெஸ்ட் டூ வெல் ஓகே வில் மீட் இன் த அட்வான்ஸ் அக்கௌண்டிங் செஷன் ஓகே ஸோ அட்மின் நான் வைண்டப் பண்ணலாம்